and we switch to the main camera. Is this too loud? It may be ridiculously loud. I do apologize if it is. Please let me know in the comments if it is ridiculously loud or whether it's suitable. I've had to reset up the entire streaming system, so this is a forewarning. Please be aware there may likely be technical glitches in tonight's stream. So. Fingers crossed they won't be too disastrous, but we have turned off adverts. So you won't be seeing any adverts during the stream, during the live presentation. There will be adverts added to the video on demand. So if you're watching video on demand, you'll see the occasional adverts. But we have disabled adverts for a live stream to prevent loss of basically information, consistency, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully it works well. Echo. There's an echo, an echo, echo, echo. echo. Right, where's the echo, echo coming echo from? from? Ah, I know. I, know. I, I, I worked out what it is. is. HDMI 1. There we go. Is that better? Mike's in the tin can. No echo. Is that better? I forgot to mute the HDMI input for the camera. Easy mistake to make. I thought it frozen then. Yay, fixed it. Better. Woo! Is the echo, is the audio level okay? Is it too loud or is it just about right? I was rating. William Bowie says, can you say Deo, Mike? Deo! Does that work? DB is high though. Audio is maxing. Sounds a bit tinny. It's a bit derpy sounding, right, okay. Sounds good, says Rick H. Oh, God. Sound is a little weird. It sounds bassy. Well, I have got some adjustments on from the Armory Crate software. So let's go into the Armory Crate. Actually, no, I'm telling actual lies. It is the Realtek Audio console. So let's just quickly go into there. And that is now on the wrong screen. There, that's on the right screen. So let's turn off the noise suppression. So that in theory, should be a little bit better, I'm hoping. Uh, let's have a look to see what the comments say. I'll leave that screen up. Uh, where are we, Asus Realtek, yes. Bloopers, there. Okay. Yes, lower the decibel. Pitch is off, but it's okay. So that was before you did anything. Does sound a bit better. That is even better, much better, all good. Sounds way better now. Right, so there, you go. If you're potentially planning on using the ASUS Realtek audio control system and you decide to use the noise suppression, don't. Because as with pretty much all of these AI gimmicks, they are exactly that. Uh, still seems a high level of dB. Okay, big pile of goodies on the table. Okay, let's have a look. I do have the microphone boost up, so let's try. Is that better? That is with zero dB gain added. That is just the microphone straight out. You've probably noticed a little bit of a dip now. <laughs> Ugly Bob's coming with a super chat. Let's get that one on. And hopefully, is this bit actually working? Yes, it is working. Excellent stuff. Sorry, I had a cat stood on the arm of my chair. Thank you, Bob, for your 20 pound donation. And Bob says, I go away for a week, for ages. We aren't at 100K yet. What's going on? I know. It is shocking. Sub, sub. Make sure you click on the subscribe button. And the chime icon. And the chime icon. And all that other YouTube-y stuff. Uh, right, okay. So it's much better, although... Right. It's when you look at the camera, it gains dB. Hmm. I wonder if I need to turn my microphone down. Let's try that, because this is set to six. This is like maxed out, which it shouldn't really be. So that's five. Is that better now? If I talk normally, is this okay? This is about my normal volume, so hopefully that's okay. It's getting to about halfway on here, so maybe it is. Sounds good to me now. This is Freedom House 1984. Kieran's having nightmares about the 7800X3D arriving. Yes, you would do. It's not good. Yes, sounds good, yep. Wally Bob says, take it to four. Let's try four. Okay, there you go. This is hardly registering actually on here now. So is that better? Tin can? We're living in a tin can. Sound a little low. 
<laughs> oh dear. Ah, I know where that is because OBS for some reason set it low. The game seems low, right, okay. Let's try something different. Stream mic, okay. Advanced audio properties. Stream mic is at, uh, let's try a zero. Does that keyboard even work? Yes, it does. Zero. And enter. Oh, it closed it. That wasn't meant to happen. Advanced audio. Right, which way is it going? Bear with me, people. This is what happens when you change your platform. Right, so that is set to zero dB. So I'm going to leave that. And then I'm going to go into stream mic and we're going to pop that down a little bit to about minus three. So how's that? Are we looking better now? That looks like it's just going into the yellow. So that should be pretty. No, now we got static. <laughs> God, everything is good, Mike. Says. Okay, how are we looking now? Deathcore Pringle says, now I think some of these guys might be messing with you. There is that possibility. Mookie MC says, congratulations, the stream is at acceptable quality, except for the host. He seems to be a bit lagging. Uh, Welly Bob says, I think it just seems more sensitive, i.e. background is being picked up. Uh, Ricky says, install armory crates. What was that for? Okay. It's great, Iry Wolfman. Okay. Well, Bill says five and five. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it as this and uh, see what happens. I can always up the levels very slightly on the microphone. It might be due to the fact I've actually got my hoodie on as well because it has been a little bit chilly today. As you can tell, is it, even though we've had all the studio lights and stuff on and the computers on in here all day, we're still only at 21 degrees Celsius, which is actually a little bit, not cold, Ideally, I like it to be about 23, 24, and it's just those two degrees make a difference. Like those inches do, eh, fellas? <laughs> Sorry. Um, Lucky Man says hissing, Mike. Is it hissing? hissing? Kath, can you turn yours on so I can, you can actually hear it? What's yours sound like? One, two, one, two. Is that working? I've lagged out now on the screen. That sound okay? Sounds like a snake hisses. Wonder where that's coming from then. There's a bit of a hiss in the background. It's the background levels being picked up. Hmm. Wonder if it's the microphone. Oh. Let's turn the thing off now. Right, now I've turned the fan off in the back. Sorry, audio ahead of the video. <laughs> ah! Uh, HDMI audio. Right, let's get rid of desktop audio. We get rid of HDMI 2. Well, is that any better? Yeah, I just turned the uh, the other the other one off, so the echo should have gone now. Echo and snakes on overhead. Welly Bob says it's like you're near the sea, a mild hiss. I wonder where that's coming from then. Now perfect, says someone. Rick H is better. Good enough. I can live with it. Man, there's, oh, there's an echo because Kaf's got her monitor on. Still snakes here. If you hear a hiss like a snake in Australia, it probably is a snake. Good enough to get on the show. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll just go with it. 
I'm not sure where that where the hissing would be coming from. That's very confusing. I never understand this stuff. It's basically the same as it was, but maybe it's not. Recording volume, rear pink in, they call it. What's that for? I wonder if that does it. I'll turn on EAC. Has that changed anything at all? And um, what sample rate are we at? Let's try. <laughs> Kieran says, I don't hear one, but I'm deaf AF. Good stuff. Jay Gordon says, better. Music fan says, did you upgrade update to 23H2? Well, we do have an interesting story about that. Ugly Bob says, I've got my headset up to 60%. I can just about hear it. Hmm. It's gone now. Right, let's just put, yeah, let's just pretend it's, it's fine. Sounds great now. It's probably Bob's cans of booze. It, it probably is. He's probably got some sand from his uh, travels stuck in his ear holes. Right, we'll go on with it as it is now. I, I have no freaking clue. I really don't what is going on. There are some very strange things going on with audio in the last few days. Um, what have you done? It's spot on now. All right, okay, so all I've, I've turned on something called e, uh, AEC, which is wow. in the ASUS software, and it says it removes the acoustic echo coupled into the microphones from the loudspeaker output through air. Shall I bring the kittens in while Pop is out? Um... Yeah, sounds different, but fine. Sounds perfectly fine now, don't change anything. Right, okay, we'll leave it. I will do a backup quickly. So, this week, I have spent some actual money trying to uh, buy things which are relevant to the modern market to see if things are worth buying for you guys. So I'm the uh, I'm the guinea pig right here. And uh, speaking of guinea pigs, Calf's brought in the guinea pigs, so I'm going to have to break my back and move this so you can have a look at the kittens. I promise this will be over shortly, so don't worry. I'll put it on the overhead camera. There we go. I'm not sure if it's got cat autofocus engaged. So let's uh, zoom you in a little bit. So there are the poppies, the mini poppies. Calf's right in the light. They're trying to escape the 1080p. They're like, no, we want bigger. We want 4K. Push the sides of the screen out. Doesn't appear to work. We have names now. So they apparently have names. I'm not very keen on the whole name situation, but... Are you not? Well, no, because you get attached to more then, don't you, with names? That's why murderers never you know your name. They never ask your name. So they don't want to murder you so much, mm. apparently. I saw that in a film. It's Candy, next to you. So that is Candy. Hello. Hey, Candy. That is... You knew that one. Um, being mounted. Davy Jones. Da that's Davy Jones, the black and white one. And the uh, that one there is Otis. I remembered a thing. We only named him about 10 minutes ago. Dave Lendl says the middle kitten is cool little dude. The they odd are, one I ate one. They are, they are pretty good. Free of says that got dark. <laughs> it is. Uh, I do like to go to the dark side. So, yeah, that is Otis. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Can I look up? Which one? That one. That's Candy. Candy. Do you want to look at the camera? Ooh. Put the other camera. <laughs> hmm? Put the other camera. Okay, Maybe sure. Facially. Right, there you go. Main camera. Kitten auto tracking engaged. Don't pay any attention to calf sleeves. I thought it was oh, there's Poppy D. <gasps> Poppy D. Uh oh, Poppy's back. She's gonna not like it. They have to go back in now. Look at him shaking. Come on, Look at him. He's got a bit of shaking. Stevens going on. Uh huh. She hasn't noticed. Oh, little monkey's looking at me. Candy. Candy monkey. Come on, play you monkeys. 
your papas. And here is mum. There she goes. Poppy's tiny, but she actually... Here you go, baby. Should we take them back? Come on then. Come on then, let's take them back. Bye-bye, monkeys. <laughs> Come on then. Right, let's go back to the main camera. That's Find nice. my chair and slither on into... Oh, motherboards. There you go. So there is the cat interlude for today. Oh, there's one more, apparently. How can we have one more? Welly Bob says, Mike and Kath, check your bank. We've been ram raided. What are you doing now? Just spinning it around to show the other two. Okay. Maisie. So there's Maisie and Flame. Flame. They're the old fellas. And Poppy. Come on then. Come in to say hi. Wait, I've got to line this up now. Right. Let's get back to business. Good, yeah. Actually, no. Check your check your bank okay, in a minute. That good? So, um, Andy. One of our regulars, Discord members, and Patreon, I think, and YouTube member, uh, kindly donated a processor to uh, Welly Bob, and didn't want anything for it financially, and just said, "Give Kath and Mike a donation." So, Kath is now checking the bank account to see what that is all about. That is such a kind thing to do. Bless, you. bless you all. You're all very kind. And actually, Rick H, while well, Kath's looking for that in a minute. Uh, Rick H kindly sent over something. Actually, say some quick prayers, will you, to Rick H? Because he's got a blood clot in his leg and that must suck. So send some thoughts and prayers and good wishes Rick H's way so he uh, hopefully feels a little bit better soon. That would be uh, cool. I can't see. Where am I looking? The top one. Uh, right here. Oh, yeah, let's see. Oh, thank you very much. I'm not going to say exactly how much it is because that is, I don't know, you shouldn't really say things like that, but thank you very much. That's much appreciated. Rick H says, feeling a bit better. Cool. Ugly Bob says, I'm rubbing my Q link for Rick H. There will be a Q link sale oh, coming up very soon. It is that time of year. Both rub our Q link. I'm going to hit my microphone now if I rub my Q link. People keep on saying to me, Mike, do you still wear your Q-Link? It's like, yes, literally. I take it off to get in the shower, and that is about it. And sometimes I wear it in the shower to clean off the, uh, the cord. Cap's got, oh, no. Cap, 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 Cap's got a pink one, Uwer, and I've got the, uh, the Mike's Unboxing blue one. Anyway, all the best to, uh, to Rick. Hopefully, uh, yeah, speedy recovery and all that stuff. And Rick, even though he is convalescing, he actually sent some goodies. So I actually sent some TF4 thermal compound from Thermalrite. And I've not tried this, I don't think. I think I've tried TF2. I'm not sure which one they send with the coolers these days, but I sent four of those over, which is actually really handy because we've got lots of motherboards to test. I've also ordered some processors as well. So I've got some Ryzen 5 uh, 7500Fs coming from the well on a basically on a slow boat from china which is the thing apparently so when they get here we'll be able to test out the boards a little bit more i am tempted to go with something a little bit more higher up the product stack as well to be able to test out these boards but i think with the current state of am5 investing heavily into the platform at the moment might potentially not be the greatest idea now i'll tell you why because you'll probably notice well you may have noticed already this box here is for the msi b650 edge wi-fi which normally is in the streaming pc behind me so as many of you know if you've watched the live streams there's been all kinds of weird shit which has happened on the am5 platform which i've pretty much documented and i've come up with various little fixes and tweaks and things like that, that you can do to try and help things out and yes some of it does make it better it's very much a kind of um it's like a whack-a-mole so you've been to the the fair or some kind of carnival the whack-a-mole thing so you get a hammer you've got like 16 holes and these little moles come up and you've got to whack them to get them back down and you basically got to keep on doing it and i think the am5 platform at least for me personally has been very much like a game of whack-a-mole so Every now and then something will go absolutely horrifically wrong 
and you have no idea what is doing it. And I have been through, well, four or five motherboards at least, three or four sets of RAM, multiple power supplies, three processors. Case-wise, I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, various hard drives, M.2s, etc. I've been through loads of stuff. We've changed lots and lots of things. But yet, it seemed that the MSI platform, which I am quite a devoted person to, had been more problematic, it seems, than others. So I thought, right, I can't keep on bitching about AM5 and its instability unless I start trying some more boards. Now, some of you already know, I've already had the ASRock uh, B650 HDM M.2. Same things happening, very weird stuff. Didn't like the board a great deal, so that has been returned. Also, I tried something cheap and cheerful from Gigabyte, the B650MK. Similar sort of stuff, like just weird glitchy behavior, so that one went back as well. So I thought, let's try ASUS. They've been going through somewhat of a, uh, a problematic time, I think it's fair to say, with various things happening, such as the overly high voltage on the AM5 platform, some of their return policies, their pricing, all that kind of stuff. There's been a lot of things which have made Asus be one of those brands where they're kind of, they're good. The hardware is pretty sound, but some of their practices and the pricing is just a little bit too much for some people. So I was very pleased to see last week that there have been some significant price reductions on Asus products, especially what I consider to be the kind of like the value section, which is the tough gaming range. So I picked up this, this is the Tough Gaming B650 Plus Wi-Fi. Very nice specs. And in terms of comparable with the B650 Edge Wi-Fi, they're kind of very similar. They do kind of trade blows. I would argue the VRM on the Edge Wi-Fi might slightly have the edge. I'm thinking now, where does it say? Can't see where it says it. I should know this off the top of my head because I've been, it's been going through my head like all week. Doesn't say. I'm pretty sure this is a 12 plus two with 60 amp chokes, whereas this is a 14 plus two plus one. But I can't remember what the chokes are. So in theory, this has got the edge on it. Although this does seem to run slightly cooler VRM wise. I think it's probably down to the cooler more so. But yeah, in terms of features, both got 2.5 gig LAN. Both got four RAM slots supporting 128 gigs of RAM. Both got premium design heat sinks, three M.2 slots, two PCI Express times 16 slots. You know, it's they're basically like for like in terms of the kind of where they are in the product stack. This at the moment has been reduced. Normally this is about 240, 250 pounds. Currently, even on Asus's own website here in the UK, if you go to Asus store, 149.99. And I picked this one up for, I think, $139.99, which I feel was actually pretty decent value for money. When we're in that sort of 100 to 120 pounds mark for a motherboard, I think it's fair to say that is a kind of a reasonable price. When you look at the price of the processors that fit on them, processor wise, the 7500F starts from about 150. So having the lowest end processor for this board being a little bit more expensive than the board itself, I think you're in a pretty good place as far as that is concerned. Let me know in the comments. Am I, am I completely talking out of my hat? Possibly I am. It has been known. But yeah, I feel that the price for this at the moment, if you go for the non-Wi-Fi version, you can get that about 10 to 15 pounds cheaper. So kind of creeping on that 125, 130 pounds mark, which AMD initially said that their kind of boards will be available for that sort of price which we kind of hope would be the B650 range, not the A620, which aren't great. So they have dropped a lot, nearly a hundred pounds, which I think is actually a massive step in terms of Asus as a brand saying, right, okay, we've messed up along the line. What can we do? Now it does beg the question, if they can afford to sell this from Asus themselves for 149.99, and previously they were selling them for closer to 250 quid. How the hell did they manage to reduce the price by a hundred pounds on the exact same product? 
that begs the question of somebody somewhere is making a shit ton of profit on these boards and to be making that much money on them does make you think hmm okay maybe they don't have our interests at heart at 150 pounds they must obviously still be making some profit otherwise they wouldn't bother selling them there would be no point and they wouldn't be losing money on them at least you'd hope not so yeah 140 150 pounds for this i think is actually a pretty decent shape let's go I'm still, oh. I lose is it relevant to this the track would you buy am5 motherboard for 250 euros if you plan to put 7600 on it no. I don't know. antonio says would you buy an am5 motherboard for 250 pounds if you plan to put an a uh, 7600 on it i don't think so unless you have a specific reason to spend that money for the spec then i don't think it's worthwhile doing i genuinely don't and hi pete and when just noticed that in the chat there how you doing i just realized i haven't got the uh the lower thirds on the screen oh well that's great um yeah so i think this is a, a, a what i would expect to pay for a moderately premium motherboard so like i said all the decent features on there you've got three addressable R no sorry yeah three addressable rgb headers plus a standard rgb nice beefy heat sinks built-in heat shield um diagnostic d leds very handy especially for am5 usb type c as you'd expect pcr express gen 5 on the main slot overall kind of everything that i would want from a motherboard with some level of future proofing as well so if you want to put a 7950x on here you can do if you don't want to it doesn't make a difference because you haven't invested an absolute ton of money uh wi-fi 6 on this one not 6e which i don't see as being a massive problem let me know actually in the comments do you have a wi-fi 6e router at home if you've got wi-fi 6 just say wi-fi 6 if you've got 6e let me know if you don't know just put don't know i am actually genuinely interested to see what people have got so i don't think many people have got a wi-fi 6e router it's a really rare thing i think at the moment here and ask did you get those copper am5 frames um I didn't get the copper frames. I've got the silicon ones, which I think was from Amazon. Yes, it was Amazon. I did place the order of Amazon. So anyway, that is the board. That is what is currently running in the PC behind me. As you can see, we're using Armory Crate to do all of our usual stuff. So yeah, a lot of people there saying Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6. Darren Gilholm's got 6E, nice one. Last man standing says I got dial up 56K. Uh, David Andrew's got a Wi-Fi 6 E mesh, nice one. Uh, Gur says, I don't know, I've got an EE hub. If it's an EE hub, it's probably going to be Wi-Fi 5, maybe 6. So, no, I don't think there isn't, I don't think Wi-Fi 6 E is widespread enough to make it one of those kind of deal-breaking things. The beauty is with these, they're all using M.2 um, E-style key cards i suppose you'd call them adapters cards whatever so if you do want to change them out it's a little fiddly but you can do it so you can replace the wi-fi cards in these you can put a wi-fi 7 if you want to but i don't think many people would want to so yeah that is the board that's gone in there now before we take a look at the other motherboard i've got as well which i'm going to get rid of this by the way if anybody wants to buy a msi b650 edge wi-fi for a sensible price please do let me know I don't want to lose too much money on it, but if somebody wants to make use of it, I don't think I will be. Although saying that, I might be going back potentially because I was thinking that most of my problems were down to MSI, which seemed like a logical thing. Now, yesterday I did the swap over because I've done the unboxing on that. I've done the bars flash, all the stuff like that. So it was time to actually put my money where my mouth was and put it into the streaming rig. Now, I have to say, doing the build, putting the processor in, I didn't use a mounting frame. It's literally in as it is intended, straight with the AM5 retention module. The only thing which I'm slightly concerned about, and now this is something I've mentioned previously, is I don't think that CPU coolers, which are designed for AM4, work with AM5 properly. Now, physically they fit, and for the most part, they will actually function, but numerous people have said this and i've actually saw it today literally before starting the stream andy over at etechnics posted on facebook that he was having problems with his 7950x where it just refused to post with the memory at a faster speeds 
until he loosened off his cooler. So basically replicating the problems I've been having with my system where it does seem there's some specific thing about the tolerance between how tight you can install the cooler on top of the processor. And because again, we've got those PGA pins now, sorry, the LGA pins, they're so, so small. And I think it's just the expansion and contraction, the heating and all that stuff just causes some weird stuff to happen. So that is something which is still a thing for sure. And you don't get it with AM4 because you can't really over tighten it too much. But this is a really, really weird problem I've had today. Now today I started off with the intention, I made a, a new video about the new Fan Expert 4 software, which is inbuilt now into Armory Crate. And Armory Crate is actually now actually pretty good. I never thought I'd actually see the day where I would say that I could recommend Armory Crate. Now I did have a few quirks with it, but they were relatively easy to remedy and I've made a video on that as well. But this is a weird problem. And tell me if you can understand this at all, because I totally can't. So system's been running all day yesterday, did a fresh installation of Windows 11, all the updates other than H3, uh, sorry, yeah, 23H2, which was kind of released last night, this morning here in the UK, did everything, set the system up and it was running basically as it is now. Happy days. And I was like, this is great. It boots up really fast. Memory training was absolutely fantastic. I went into the BIOS and all the XMP settings or Expo settings were exactly as printed on the box. So I knew the RAM was exactly the right frequencies. I had no problems, no crashing, no weirdness, no nothing. Literally for about six or seven hours yesterday, absolutely fantastic. So I woke up this morning, this afternoon, and got together everything right. Next video to do, the new software. Let's do a video on that. Now to show how to set up the fans, we go into the BIOS. And then after we've done the BIOS settings, we can then go into Armory Crate. So BIOS first, Windows after. So I connected up all my street on my uh, video recording stuff so I can offload the footage because obviously you can't record in the BIOS without having a camera in front. Did all the tweaks, did all the settings, basically went in, fan settings, blah, blah, blah. Got to the point where I said in the video, right, now we're gonna head over to the Windows desktop, rebooted from BIOS into Windows, and it refused to do it. It would not reboot. And every time it rebooted, it said, uh, the system has recovered from uh, in safe mode because of a previous setting in your BIOS did not work, press F1 to go into setup to reset it. And I was like, well, what have I, I haven't done anything. All I've done is literally change the fan speeds. That is all I've done. That can't be affecting anything because I've not changed Expo, I've not changed the uh, ASUS precision enhancements, none of that stuff at all. So I just kept on rebooting and I thought, well, I'll take the RAM sticks out, put them back in because you never know, uh, tweak the cooler a little bit, and it still just would not go back into Windows. It just kept on hanging, would not let me in, not even to the BIOS, apart from to change stuff, it would not save the settings. And it's like, this is weird. I've not done anything. The system's been fine for like six or seven hours, and now it's basically dead. So, turned off Expo, reset the BIOS, got back in, and then for some reason, now this is the weirdest thing. Now this is a system which has been running for six or seven hours with no problems at all. At this point, it wouldn't load into Windows. And it said, trying to do system recovery and trying to diagnose problems with your system. I'm like, what is going on here? And then the next thing I know, it comes up with the Windows, um, almost like the out of box experience. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's recovered itself. It's a bit confused, so we'll have to do the OBE. Put my username in, password and all that stuff. And it said, do you want to restore from a previous um, set up and it's like, yeah, okay, let's do that. And basically it nuked the Windows installation and essentially started me from scratch. So from just rebooting the motherboard in the BIOS to get into Windows, somehow, and I don't know how, it managed to entirely nuke my Windows installation. And I didn't even have a Windows.old folder. Normally, if there's a problem with Windows, it does an upgrade over the top of itself and it gives you a Windows old folder. Old folder. Absolutely nothing. So it left me with a completely blank install. No drivers, no programs, no settings that I'd already done. Absolutely useless. 
So at this point, I am very, very lucky that I always install the Synology Active Backup for Business. And yesterday I did take a couple of snapshots of the system in its working state. So I got my bootable Synology disk, put it in, connected it up to the NAS, and I've restored it. It took about an hour to do to transfer all the files across, and then it got back to how it is now. So, yes, it worked. Well, it's working now, and touch wood, it seems okay again. But I'm still at that point where I was up until when it went weird today. I had like a good time with it, and it was like, this seems like a pretty decent platform now. Maybe it was the MSI motherboard was the problem. But then to have that weirdness, I still don't know. Now, maybe there's something weird going on with my power delivery in here. That is a potential. Some of you may know that every now and then when I plug in uh, something to the power strip down there, the, the power goes out. So I might have to put um, UPS on here just to try and smooth it out. I don't really want to, but I think putting a UPS on there would at least alleviate that as a potential issue but the only thing other than that was the fact that i had the elgato card plugged into the hdmi output on the graphics card maybe it didn't like that as a uefi type device i don't know anyway cheers jason woods so yes it has been it was elation it was like this is great this is what this platform should be but then i had some weirdness but just before I did the restart into the BIOS, I did try to do the H3, the uh, 23H2 update. And when I did it, it said there was an error and it wouldn't do it. So I am slightly erring on the side of caution and thinking to myself, right, there was a Windows update, which was a bit problematic. Maybe for some reason, when I went into the BIOS and then when it couldn't load up, it just really confused the system because it was expecting to try and do a Windows update. You know that when you turn off your PC and it starts up and says Windows is updating. Maybe there was some kind of flag set in the operating system where it was trying to do that. I honestly don't know. So as it stands at the moment, although I do really, really like this board, and actually it does seem to be quicker in general, performance does seem slightly better as well. And actually I think it looks really nice. So. I am currently recommending it as a really good option, especially with almost £100 off. And if you go onto Amazon, there's links in the video description, you can check it out. It's £130, £140, maybe £150, depending on which version you get and where you live. But I think for the money, it's actually much better now. It's considerably better than spending 200 odd quid, which does seem too much, I think, for a essentially a mid-range platform. So... That is the AM5 situation and where we're at. I've also ordered some silicon shims as well that fit into the socket. Now, I don't know whether this is going to make a difference or not. I'm almost convinced 100% that it's something to do with the mounting pressure on the processor. That seems to me to be the problematic thing, which would make sense because when you're in the BIOS, there's no power management for the processor. It's just running at the full clock speed. So maybe it got hot in the, the package and then it expanded and I don't know, some weird stuff, but I think it's something to do with the mounting pressure. I genuinely do. And actually using an AM5 mounting bracket seems to cause me more problems than not. And trying to get the actual torque right on it is really, really hard to do. And it's so difficult because you get an ambient change in your room and you're kind of screwed because that just small ambient temperature decrease or increase can mean a little bit more expansion or contraction of the system, the motherboard, the PCB. Maybe if you've got a thicker PCB, like a six layer or eight layer PCB, it might be better. Although I believe this is a six layer PCB. So it shouldn't be a problem with this. Anyway, that's where I am. Time. Sorry? Did you say about your boot time? Yeah. Just... Yeah, the, the boot times are uh, significantly better. The boot up time is like sub 20 seconds which is basically what you'd expect from a modern system. And in fact, if I take my Intel system against that now, I'd say the Intel system probably takes a little bit longer to boot, even though they've got the same amount of RAM. So yeah, I think that would be, uh, that would be something which, might, it has been improved. It has been improved, definitely. So if you are thinking of dipping your toes into the world of AM5, Get yourself a cheap 7500F off AliExpress, like I've done. Uh, you're looking at 
£3,540. Pick up one of these, £130, £140-ish, and you've got a, a killer little system. The 7500F is a cracking processor. It's essentially the 7600 with a fused off onboard graphics, and I think it's a 100 megahertz slower clock. Other than that, it's basically the same uh, processor. So, yeah, I think that's going to be cool. Yes, Kat. Deathstroke, does it give you torque readings for tightening it down? No, Deathstroke, it does not give you torque readings for tightening it down. That is something which is severely lacking. I had this problem with the Intel system using the Thermal Right AM5 bracket, uh, LGA30, uh, LGA1700 brackets. And actually, if, I'll show you what they look like. If you've never seen one before, I have just recently taken it out of here. So this is the... I know, I was thinking that. So this is the AM5 secure frame in red, which I'm not sure if Rick sent this actually, or whether this is the one I purchased. I can't remember. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, I think he sent the, the Intel one. So basically all you get inside is you get some... Um, TF7 thermal group. You get a Torxy head screwdriver and four screws, and you get the mounting plate. So that is essentially it. Now, what I think is the problem on these is that the, um, if you see on the back there, there's these rubber sections there, just isolation pads. And the metal itself is like really strong. You can't bend it, but I think it's when you torque these screws down, it's just a... a, a oh, sorry. The, um, let me get rid of that. Now, uh, where is the clear button? Come here. So you can see what's going on there, and you can see there's, there has actually been some, a little bit of seepage of paste there. But I'm pretty sure it's just where these aren't manufactured quite right, and possibly either too little or too much torque on these. The trouble is with these, the screws when they go in, you can't really torque them down a great deal. There isn't really a much, well, I'll show you. There is the screw. So there is a little bit of length there, but not a lot if you consider how thick that is. So in terms of the actual screw going down through, I'm not sure if you, if you can actually see that. So the screw is, it's only popping through like a couple of millimeters at best. There's not a lot to go on. So in terms of getting the right torque, it's, it's a really hard thing to do. I think personally, this whole LGA nonsense is just, it's just a pain in the ass. And I so, so wish, I've said this when they started it. So like, please don't go LGA. It's just the worst thing in the world. AM4, AM3, AM2, FM1, FM2, AM3+, plus, AM2 even. All of them have been great. Yes, you may be some, someone might drop a processor and bend a pin. Big deal. It isn't the end of the world, is it? Well. Rick sent the AMD and the Intel frames. Ah, thank you, Rick. So yeah, I honestly, I, I don't know. I think a lot of it is through the mounting pressure. And the thing is, because you're dealing with what is literally a thermonuclear processor, as all the new ones are designed to hit like 95 degrees, that is their operating frequency. 95 degrees Celsius is hot, and you are gonna get some expansion in that. Because, well, anything which is metal is gonna expand and contract. So as soon as you get hot, or you get extremes of cold, you're gonna get that movement. And with those pins being small, I think it's just a recipe for disaster, it really is. And I think if they can't work out a way of doing this so that the platform remains more stable in different temperatures, I think honestly, this is gonna be the end for personal computing in terms of enthusiasts going out and buying stuff. There's gonna be a lot of you that are watching this now, which are on AM4 or something, and like, You've had a pretty decent experience. When a lot of people start upgrading to AM5, I can see there being an absolutely huge amount of troubleshooting and return parts. Because it's so easy to just assume, all right, processor doesn't work, motherboard doesn't work, 
and getting random crashes. It's, and it's just escalating because then all that stuff's going to get sent back. The costs are going to increase. It's going to be a more expensive platform to buy and it's, it's super unreliable. So, anyway, I don't know. Bob's been a for 25 months. 25 months as a supporter, Ugly Bob. Bless your heart. Thank you very much. Uh, Mookie MC says, Mike's new camera is a focusing genius. It is actually bloody good. O'Reilly is in the chat. Thank you, sir. And uh, 10 pounds super chat says, Hi, I've been working on my PC again. O'Reilly has become a, an RGB nut. Nut's probably the wrong word. Um, enthusiast. Enthusiastic nut. Actually, I've got a beer. I'm going to get in a beer. Do you want a beer, calf? Don't blame me. Uh, what cup should I I'm going to slum it. I'll slum it out of the can. I don't really like drinking it out of a can, but I will do. I'm going to have a Heineken. Because it refreshes the parts other AMD processors cannot touch. Or something along those lines. Thank you for the super chat, O'Reilly. Cheers, everybody. Mookie says something about AMD stock coolers and mountain for R7. In a weird accent, says uh, Mike AM5 will improve with Ryzen 8000. Just now, don't buy. I like to think that is the case. I like to think that it will improve, but I don't think it can. Uh, Stuart Clear has also been a member for 25 months. Says, Cheers, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for all your uh, all your support and help, and also Ugly Bob as well. He's also been a member for 25 months. Does that come up on there? Where is time gone? Oh. I don't know. Time is mad. <clears throat> Ari Wolfman says maybe the Thermal Grizzly one is better designed. Well, the thing is, it shouldn't be necessary. You shouldn't have, like, I haven't got one on my system at the moment. And when I'm tightening up the cooler, which is the Noctua NHU12S something, it seems like it puts way too much force on the socket. But in terms of compatibility, it's listed as being AM4 stroke AM5 compatible. But I would disagree. I would say it isn't. But until there are some um, some bigger YouTube names that actually start standing up and saying, look, this is unacceptable. I don't think anything's going to change. Or at least they won't look into it sufficiently to say, right, okay, we've looked into it. Yes, we can see there's a problem. If you do your um, screws up to X torque, then this should alleviate the problem. I would be fine with that. But at the moment, there's no one making enough noise, unfortunately. So, anyway. Kieran says, I think the issues lie with the boards, not the actual processors. Oh, it's 100% it's the boards. It's 100% the boards. And the AMD are in a fortunate place because they just make the processors and the chipsets. The actual LGA socket itself, it's like, we don't care. That's We've made it. That's what it's all about. Uh, Farman says the B550 ASUS is $130 where I live. Should I get it? Uh, which one is it? This one? The Tough Gaming Plus Wi Fi? Which actually we're going to get onto that now because. because uh, what's Welly Bob's question? Has Mike used. Let's see, sorry, I've got to move it there. Uh, hang on. <laughs> oh, we had another super chat come in. Where's that? Oh, yeah. There we are. Andy Archer. Bless you, Andy. And thank you for the uh, the kind donation via Welly Bob. Much appreciated. And there is a £10 super chat. And it's got a number five on the end. What's that before? <laughs> I don't understand YouTube. It's a very strange place. Uh, for kitty litter and feather toys. Oh, don't. Don't. We've got a bucket full of kitty toys. And kitty litter, we've got plenty. Calf's just done that. But thank you very much. Uh, Kieran says, I might actually try to buy a torque wrench before I attempt to build mine. Would you not bother getting the contact frame? See, I don't know. I don't think I don't think the contact frame is necessarily 100% the problem. 
I think is mounting pressure of the CPU cooler. And I would love to get a new AM5 um, processor that comes with an Intel, oh, sorry, an AMD cooler, like a stock one, and then measure the actual screw threads and see if they're the same size as the AM4 ones. If they're a different size or a different tension, I think that would open up the discussion to say, right, okay, you said there was going to be compatibility, but clearly there isn't. And it's just made it more confusing for manufacturers because they're like, okay, physically it looks the same, but I'm pretty sure the, is it the Z height of the CPU? I think they call it the Z height, is different from AM4 to AM5. So in theory, the sockets or the, the cooling solutions cannot be the same because they're physically a different height. But anyway, I don't get it. There's a couple of questions there. Uh, was, do you get the same problems as, and the five was the fifth super chat. Oh, fifth super chat. Oh, live stream. oh awesome. Uh, other question, Dutch Jan. All board manufacturers haven't done their homework that you need a contact frame to keep temperatures under control. I Again, I don't even think it's the contact frame. The, the whole Intel 12th gen and 13th gen and 14th gen, I suppose now, and AM5, they've all tried to do the same thing. And I said this loads of times, and it's, it's getting boring, but they're just screaming at each other trying to be the fastest gaming processor when realistically most of us don't really care as long as you can play your game like ultimately the fastest gaming processor is down to amd and nvidia the processor makes very very little difference as we've seen in numerous games you can run basically as long as you've got a decent graphics card you can put a potato processor in and you'll get roughly the same frame rates as what you'd get with a top of the line uh, top of the line processor so it kind of chasing for this faster and faster processor is basically pointless. It's just putting more strain on the system. But in the course of them doing that and upping these clock speeds, it's like, oh, we're the first to 5,000. We're the first to 6,000. We're just seeing these crazy, crazy wattages and crazy power draw. And that can't be helping. Uh, David Aitken's coming in the Super Chat there. Thank you very much. Five pounds there. He says, uh, make a dedicated video on it. Uh, we will share it with Paul, LTT, GN, J, and DeBauer. Let's blow this thing up, Mub, as the catalyst. 200,000 subs incoming. Come on! That's what we want. That's not a bad idea, actually. Maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll just do it as like an, an open letter to the community and see what people's thoughts are. Because I'm pissed off of it. I like AMD stuff, generally. AM4, I feel, was an excellent platform and was a good idea. Anyway. So, I do have a contingency plan, as you can see. So, this was also a pretty good deal. And actually, this is the same as well. So, Asus are taking things quite seriously and reducing prices. This was, I think this was £229 on Asus's own website for uh, the UK pricing, which is just ridiculous. This is now down to about 125 I want to say, 123 maybe. So in that sort of magical 120 range, which I think is like a game, I think it's an acceptable price. If you're getting the features, then I think spending a little bit more on a motherboard works out well. Competitors with this, you're going to be looking realistically somewhere around the B6, uh, B550 Tomahawk Gaming Edge. The Gaming Plus, I would say, is a little bit lower down. That's a little bit cheaper in general. But I think £120-ish pounds for this. This has got the specs that you want. And it seems now the pricing as well. Now, when it comes to the AM4 platform, most of the other players are doing a good job. MSI did a really good job. Gigabyte did a really good job. ASRock themselves did a good job. So they've all had pretty good experiences B550-wise. So you can't really go too far wrong. But availability is definitely an issue. And there is a super chat from uh, Captain Aronius, Aroniox. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but thank you for your 199. Yeah, Cap X Captain Aronius, Aronius, Aronius. I I don't know. I've probably done that. Uh, that is your first super chat on a live stream. Thank you very much. Or sticker. 
And it says there underneath, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Yes, I agree. Captain Erroneous. Erroneous, I got you. Uh, Joe G says M5 contact frame is kind of pointless. It is really. The contact frame is more... There are some um, brass and silicon inserts which go in the top now to stop the paste going down through. Those are worth doing. I've actually ordered some of those. Those will be coming out. I am going to do some tests on that. Fortunately, it was really good timing that Rick sent in the uh, the TH4 compound because so I'm going to be nailing through that. So I will be replacing that, trying that in various coolers. And actually, I'm going to try with some other coolers on here as well. I want to find out what the, what the difference is. If actually, if anyone's got the time and can be bothered, have a look to see what the Z height difference is between AM4 and AM5. And if it works out that it's like one millimeter or two millimeters, in theory, if you unscrew the screws for your cooler, two or three millimeters, that should really take up that deficit in height and reduce the pressure. Possibly. I don't know. Maybe it will. Riley says, damn it, Mike, Asus Tough B550 plus Wi-Fi 2 board, you're copying me. Uh, that board at 100 to 140 is amazing board, good value. Using it with my uh, 5800X3D and 6950XT. Happy days. So let's have a quick look at this board and see what it's all about. Because this is actually, yeah, this is my step back into AM4. So if this platform just, just turns out to be completely unsuitable, this will go in the streaming PC. And then I'll do another separate AM5 rig for testing and whatever and uh, I won't have to worry about it or won't have to be concerned that every couple of days or a couple of weeks is all of a sudden just going to crap itself. So this is the Wi-Fi 2 version. Now before anybody asks me what the difference is, I have no idea. Uh, if anyone else has got one of these, the, pre the previous version, the Wi-Fi, not the Wi-Fi 2, let me know. I'm guessing it's probably going to be upgraded Wi-Fi 6. I think the previous version was probably Wi-Fi 5, maybe. I can't see there being many differences. They might have updated the um, the BIOS, so it's ready for maybe 5,000 CPUs out of the box. Although saying that, it doesn't appear to have any stickers on to say when. And the manufacturing date with, of this was May of this year. So I'm guessing it should have pretty much all the BIOSes in anyway. So let's have a look, see what we get. Sadly, you don't get a captive I.O. shield, which is uh, a little bit of a shame, but I don't think it's the end of the world, and I actually don't mind installing an I.O. shield. You've got all the usual stuff in here, so you've got the BIOS flashback and all that kind of stuff. You've got your ASUS antenna. Am I pronouncing it right? ASUS? 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 Call it what you like. Yes, Kath. Mm. Captain. Not very nice. All the brackets in front of them, but they can't tell what's what. Join the Discord. Yes. Uh, yeah, Captain Erroneous, if you go onto our Discord, um, if there's anyone from our Discord in here who is currently um, a VIP level or higher, can you please set uh, Captain Erroneous Discord to be a member so they can post images? Go into the tech chat and uh, we'll do it. Rick H says TF4 is 9.5 watts per kel watts per meter Kelvin, easier to apply. Awesome, that's what I like to hear. So motherboard wise, let's have a look. Let's get some actually on the overhead. Uh, do we need to focus in? Have we got yeah, we have got friendly motion blur, that's good. So I have been very uh, against ASUS of recent times because of Basically, Armory Crate and the way that it's just hard work to get drivers and stuff, but Armory Crate does appear to be considerably better now. I'm hoping on this board, and actually, Rally, if you've got this board, if you go into Armory Crate, if you've got it, go into the settings cog and then updates. If you scan through your updates, there might be one for Armory, uh, for Fan Expert 4, which you can then install inside of it. Oh, wow. Smell of a new motherboard. <laughs> Farnay? Farnham? 
Farnham. Uh, there we go. Uh, the Z height of the CPU yeah. package is kept the same of that of AM4. No, I throw that in the bias version of the motherboard is written in the last four digits by the CPU. I don't understand that. I've heard that the BIOS version of the motherboard is written in the last four digits by the CP. Farnon, I don't understand that. Is it that barcode? I don't know. That's what I don't understand. I've heard the BIOS version of the motherboard is written in the last four digits by the CPU. Barcode. Put the last four digits on that barcode. Right. Barcode. I will see. Let's have a look. Can't see it on there. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's bigger on here. Alright, oh, okay. So, there's the last four digits of the CPU. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's the last four digits. The last four digits of the serial number. No, because the last four digits are 4G6M. So, no, I don't think that is right. Although. Let's see if that serial number that serial number should be the same as the one on here. I don't know, you could be right actually. I will stand erected. There is my magnifying doodah. So I don't know what the bass version is for this actually, but I do have a magnifying glass so I can find out what is actually there. So let's see if there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to focus on that at the same time. So, yes, that serial number there has 3002. Um, actually, are you guys going to be able to see that at all? I think we would if you had it over the right part under the camera. It's the angle you've got it on yeah. for your eyes. No, I don't think it will. No, I ain't going to focus on that. Anyway, so yeah, it does say actually on that serial, so three zero, that's very handy information. Thank you for that. So three zero two, uh, that'll be the base one then. So if we head over to the ASUS website, and we can validate that, uh, if I can open up a web browser thing. Let's do it incognito, full screen, and B550 tough, gaming, oh, that's right, gaming Wi-Fi, gaming plus, why are they going to have such stupid names, Wi-Fi 2, accept all, okay, right, let's get to desktop stream. Um, actually, do I need to mute any audio? No. Stream mic is okay. Desktop audio is muted. So let's turn the desktop audio on. There we go. Can you hear me still? I can't see the comments, but Kath will let me know. So that is the board there. Let's go to the support tab. Oh, Asus eShop price, 188. The ripping swines right bios and firmware so yeah that is quite an old bios what did i say 3002 so yeah that's from march that actually makes sense because the manufacturing date was in may and there wasn't another update between march and uh was that july so yeah we're on that one so that is a gisa or a gisa combo pi 1208 uh, Oh, that's for the vulnerabilities and security. What do these add? I don't know. So we are likely to have to update the BIOS. And there's actually one from the 23rd of October. So last month. So that's quite a new one. So we will definitely get on and do that at some point. So anyway, that is the, um, that's the information there. What am I on now? Main camera. Did I want to be on that? No, I don't want to be on the... Rolando. Over. Hello. Hi, Rolando. Like a little bit. Stuart Clear is coming with a super chat as well. Let's click on that. Bless your heart, Stuart. For 20 euros. Much appreciated. 
over there in the Emerald Isle. I think they call it the Emerald Isle. Is it the Emerald Isle? I have no idea. Geography has never been my strong point, as most of you will probably understand. Very long day still. Yeah, I know. I can't see oh, nothing. Um, oh, yeah. Up a bit. Rolando says, I did like Armory Crate, but it also crashed games. Crashes for me, and my case fans would spin like crazy, but I've got a PC stable now. Uh, good. Uh, I was having weird issues when my CPU die temps were hitting 140C and higher in hardware info. There's even a chat forum where many people had this issue with AM5. I uninstalled Armory Crate and that fixed it. <laughs> how, how nuts. So potentially uninstalling Armory Crate on my AM5 system might actually cure it. Okay. Oh, thank you, Matthew. March version. Didn't see that there. Excellent. Good, good stuff. Right. Uh, motherboard wise, so let's see what's going on here. So, as you can see, there is uh, two M.2 slots, which is quite common actually for the B550 chipset. Very rare do you get three. Actually, I'm trying to think what boards actually did have three. There wasn't many. Uh, probably the Gigabyte um, Ultra, was it? Uh, David Aitken says, it'd be good to see if it matches in reality. Can you boot it during the stream? What was that? Sorry. Oh, what? The, oh, the motherboard. Probably could. Um, no, I couldn't because I need a processor. That would be tricky. Yeah, I can't actually boot it currently. Yeah, that would be good. Normally, they are pretty good. If they say there's a certain BOSS version on there, I know with ASRock boards, they print it onto the board as well. And maybe that's where ASUS are getting the idea from. And those were normally quite good. Are those interchangeable? I think they might be. That is actually quite handy. So those are actually interchangeable by looks. So if you put one in the wrong place, it isn't the end of the world. I kind of like that. So M.2 at the top, so PCI Express Gen 4x4, PCI Express Gen 4 times 16 top slot with uh, the uh, extra bit of metal around the PCI Express thing, although I've managed to snap those off before now. They're not great. Uh, PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 slot there, I believe that's going to be. And those are all going to be PCI Express. Well, those two will be PCI Express Gen 3 times 1. That'll be times 4 times 1, I think. And the bottom M.2 will probably be PCI Express Gen 4. I really need to check the manual actually on that, see what the deal is. I will know by the time I do the proper unboxing, but I just want to get an idea, see what it's all about. So yeah, big drives available in there. Plenty of M, uh, what are they called, RGB connectors there. No addressable ones at the top, but you've got your diagnostic LEDs on there. Four RAM slots, happy days. Reasonably decent. VRM heat sinks. It's actually quite surprising. These I thought were quite big, but then if you look at the modern boards, they're huge. But yeah, not bad. If, effectively, if you look at it kind of in a comparison with the B650, this isn't actually that dissimilar. You've got the 2.5 gig LAN on the back. You've also got Wi-Fi 6. The audio outputs are basically the same. Um, you've got a few more. Actually, no, you've got the same amount of USBs. You've also still got the um, HDMI and Wi-Fi, so there isn't actually a great deal of difference chipset-wise. Um, same audio, so that's the Realtek S1200 chipset. I suppose you do have a little bit of extra because you've got six SATA ports on there rather than four that you tend to get on more modern boards. But yeah, overall, I think it's a nice looking board. There's very little to dislike about it. The only thing I suppose if I was to be particularly picky I'd have preferred to have seen the um, USB 3.0 being a USB Type C. That is something which I think does kind of show its age a little bit. The fact there isn't a USB Type C header at all, whereas the majority of the MSI ones, even some of the lower end ones, do have USB Type C front panel. Not the end of the world, most people don't care, but a lot of cases now are starting to have USB Type C included. The NVMe Gen 4, where is the Gen 5? Uh, on this one, uh, Gen 5 wasn't available on uh, the PCIe, well, on the, the B550 chipset. 
because all of the AM4 CPUs are PCI Express Gen 4 maximum, so you wouldn't have it. Any other questions there? And the RX Effect BIOS version. Uh, BIOS version on this is... Uh, the RX Effect BIOS version 3404, 2310, Yeah, that's what... Uh, that's the latest one. Alrighty says, I can confirm it is a good board. Well, it better be. On your head be it. Yeah, Welly Bob says there are no Gen 5 on B550. And the break says I have this motherboard and both my builds going on for you. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and Gers says, uh, Gers 1987 <laughs> says, that's great to hear considering this board instead of an MSI Gaming Plus stroke Tomahawk. Now, I would say that when it comes to the B550 range, I would argue that MSI probably offers slightly better value for money in general i think they they actually were very strong in the b550 range but i do want to see how things like armory crate and all that stuff affects b550 now because it's been a good it must be at least a year or more since i last used an msi uh, sorry an, an asus AM4 board. We did have the, uh, the B660 Strix a little while back, which we got from Kieran. And I think there's probably another one as well in between that. I'm not too sure which one it was, but uh, for AM4, definitely Asus have not done a great deal with at all for a long time. So I thought at this price, I actually got it as a used deal. So I got it a little bit cheaper. I think this was 117 or something, because it's basically, um, it says it's been opened, but from what I could tell, the bag was uh, sealed, so whatever. Maybe it was a, I would just return something didn't want. So yeah, overall, I think it's actually um, a very nice looking board. It does look a little bit on the thin side. I think it's only a four layer PCB, which isn't ideal. I would like it to be a bit thicker. But saying that, it's only PCI Express Gen 4 at the most, so the extra traces, probably not as important for memory. Memory standards and memory compatibility on the AM4 platform was one of the stronger points towards the end of its run. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it for the money. I don't think you can go too far wrong. It's actually quite a nice aesthetic as well. And if you like your whole kind of Corsair ecosystems, Asus boards run really nicely with Corsair. Or if you just like um, the Asus ecosystem, you wanna get your tough branded keyboard, your tough branded mouse, there's a lot of tough branded equipment on the market, which isn't necessarily all from Asus. It's part of the Tough Gaming Alliance, which incorporates many companies such as uh, Imwin, Asrock, all sorts. So you can get a lot of other stuff which will kind of complement with it quite nicely. So I'm actually looking forward to doing that, doing a little build in there. I'm not too sure what processor to use in it. That is gonna be somewhat of a see what happens on Black Friday possibly. I'm thinking I would quite like to go with a 5700X. I've, I've had a 5800X before and it was just a pain in the balls to keep it cool. It just required too much kind of pandering. I think the 5700 is probably the better way to go. Maybe even a 5600X, but we'll see. Uh, Rick H. The new RGB, R Radeon G Vidya B Intel. The new RGB. Uh, where's Nick? Actually, it's Nick's birthday this uh, Monday. Nick Barnes, otherwise known as Sinrab. So send all your best wishes. He will be watching this stream actually on the catch up. He's having a bit of a perf birthday shindig tonight. So that's why he's not with us. So uh, do wish him well in the chat. So I think that is pretty much it for. 3600. I, I might, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind us 3600 actually, just as have as a spare, because that's not a bad little processor. Farnham. Farnham says, what about the 5500? No one seems to ever talk about that one. I did have a 5500 before. I think. What was it that was special about the 5500? Was it reduced cash? I can't remember what it was.
5800X works well. The 5800, I'm not overly keen on the X3D processors, to be honest with you. They are um, fantastic for what they offer for gamers. I am not a, a real gamer as such. I enjoy playing PC games, but I'm not ultra competitive and I'm not particularly bothered how the game looks or to be honest with you, how it runs. Most of you that know me well enough will know that my, uh, actually let's get this done. Because that's just the most annoying noise in the world. Actually, another reason for getting this board over and above it being a pretty decent price right now was the fact that it was just, uh, it was cheap. So, and it's one I haven't reviewed previously. Somehow managed to miss this one out. I don't know how. Cheers, Stuart. Take care, mate. So anyway, not a bad board, not a bad price. I've noticed a lot of the B550 boards, especially some of the MSI ones, are really creeping up in price. Previously, I would have pretty much always recommended B550 Gaming Plus or the Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, or sorry, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, as I always believe those to be really nice boards, very good quality, um, extremely stable, which is always something which uh, we try and strive for, but they're getting really expensive, which is a... Uh, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, truck fan says zooting off. See you, Mike. No worries. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Wendy Bob says the 5800X runs hotter than a 5900, 5950X. Ask me how I know. Yeah, the 5800X was one of those processors which just really, really did kind of struggle to keep that under control. And I remember going from the 3900X to the 5800X. It was roughly the same sort of power in terms of actual what I could get done work-wise, but the uh, the cooling necessary for it was just insane. Uh, David Aiken says, I'm not convinced production is still running for B550. I would imagine it's ramped down considerably. Uh, Rick H says, I still need to try the Robocop demo. That, I think, has finished because the game has actually launched either yesterday or today and it's full thing, so I don't think the demo is still available. It might be, though. I enjoyed it, actually, Robocop demo. It was very good. What have you done? You want default view? Bottom right-hand corner? Go up? No, not that far up. There we go. David Unruh says the B450 are still being made, let alone the B550. Yeah, I think that is true. It is, um, they will still be, be in production to some extent, but there won't be a, a, such an emphasis on it. In a weird accent, says Mike, how is Asus treating you? Was it easier than MSI AM5 boards? Um, well, that is the thing. I did have a bit of a discussion about it a little bit earlier, and... At the moment, it's hard to say whether or not the problem was induced by me, whether it was um, just one of those really weird quirks that happens. It's something which I haven't seen happen on basically any other system so far. Getting to the point where just tweaking the fans in the BIOS leads to a system basically nuking the Windows installation. And I mean like properly nuking it, like no data there at all, no user data. How on earth that happened, I do not know. It's like it sort of, it booted to the recovery partition and then realized that there was nothing on the main partition. Now, potentially it could be a bad drive. There is gonna be that. It is one of those uh, Phanexia or Phanexiana drives. It's the two terabyte one. So, not that I'm giving these uh, cheapo Chinese brands a bad name, but I think if it had been a silicon power in there or a Crucial or something along those lines, Doing easy. <laughs> I would have been, well, I wouldn't have thought it was them if it was that. I would have then said, right, it's the it's the motherboard or processor. In a weird accent, says what? Same that happened to me. 
That's actually so scary, so crazy. Uh, Dave says they've killed off the B550 models though. MSI B550 range is tiny compared with what it once was. Try finding a Gaming Edge, Mortar or Unify essentially done for new stock. Yeah, I think they'll probably, if anything, they'll concentrate on the lower end stuff. Or they're just still getting stock out because it hasn't sold. But yeah. So in a weird accent, let me know what happened to your system. But yeah, it was very weird. I think... I'm trying to think, I've not seen that before. I've seen it before where if you can't boot a few times into the BIOS and you have to reset it, sometimes Windows will get the arse on and it'll say you need to do like a um, a recovery thing. But to completely nuke the boot sector and lose all my profile data, everything, just seemed really, really bizarre. Like, properly bizarre. Especially yeah, especially when I was literally in the BIOS making the video, rebooting and it nuked windows that's just nuts and i think i'm actually currently on the latest bios version as well which is probably not great oh dear hey ho Yeah, in a weird accent. Sounds like you're having very similar problems. I think, personally, AM5 is heading for heartache for a lot of people. And it's weird. I don't understand how other YouTube channels and reviewers have been so quiet about it. I really don't. Because there's definitely other people which are having the same problems. Although, I have noticed quite a few of the YouTubers have been using Intel builds recently, other than those that are sponsored by AMD. So, I don't know. Gur says the MSI B550 Gaming Plus is £120 on Amazon. Uh, David Aiken says, is the latest ASUS BIOS a beta like MSI? I don't think, I don't think so. I'll, need, I'll check actually. This is very gassy. I actually tried some beer in an actual pub, believe it or not. Actually went out the house. And, uh, oh God. So, B6, I wonder if I can actually get the URL right for this. That'd be ace. B650 plus Wi-Fi. Boom, it worked. Let's go onto the um, desktop screen. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. So, Asus eShop price, <laughs> juke. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we? What do I want? Oh yeah, support. So yeah, tried some uh, some booze, and it's um, what was the what was it called again, Cav? It was some. It was a it was a lager, and it was called something Skull, and it was like an IPA, but it was lovely. It went down so nicely. Something beginning with B, I think, the brewery. Someone's bound to know in the chat. Anyway, where are we? Uh, driver and tools, boss and firmware. So I'm pretty sure that is the version I used. Uh, version 1811. Because I think that had been out a couple of weeks, yeah. That's right. So that is the version that I'm currently running on, I believe, 18.11, which doesn't appear to be a beta. Can apparently improve system stability. Who'd have thought? I don't think they've got any beta versions actually for this one at all. I don't, there's one. 16.01, that was a beta. And 14.14 14 was also a beta. Hey, James Brock. And there's another beta. So there's a couple of betas in there. But it seems the current one that I'm using, that one there, is a, is a proper release. Yes, very strange. So yeah, I, uh, I have no idea. No idea what was going on with that at all. Like I said, it could be one of those things 
the whole um, Windows update which failed just before I started, well it didn't fail, it just said retrying or retry because I'd done some Windows updates, I'd gone into the computer, it did I think a security update and then I wanted to do the H3, ah, oh God, I keep on saying that, 23H3 and then, yeah I just wouldn't have it. Firestorm says I have a micro uh, Asus ROG Strix B660 gaming Wi-Fi, no problems, Intel. Yeah, Intel platform is, uh, well, they've, they've had a long time with that LGA socket to kind of perfect it somewhat. Although I think they're still struggling, especially when it comes to some of the new um, mounting brackets, which can be a bit problematic. JB27 says, Mike drinking a beer. I have not seen that in a long time. It's been one of those days. It really has. Wild Bill says, Brooklyn. No. Um, what was it called? Is it Beaver Town? Oh, Beaver Town. Mm. Take me to. <laughs> Beaver Town. Let's see if I can find it now. Thanks, Cal. It kind of comes to me there as I was uh, <laughs> deliberating. Beaver Town Skull. Oh, bones. Uh, well, it might have been bones. bones. Beaver Town Bones. Bones Lager. There we go. Not that I'm condoning um, alcohols, but let's go to the uh, desktop stream. There we go. So, Beaver Town, that's the one. Beaver Town Bones. Low bitterness lager with a hint of citrus and the smoothest, cleanest aftertaste that delivers the ultimate thirst quenching, easy drinking experience for you and all your mates. Guaranteed to hit the spot from your first pint to your last. Make no bones about it. This is dead refreshing, dead crisp, dead good lager. There we go. And um, that's the cans. I would suggest if you can get it on draft because it, it seemed really nice on draft. Good stuff. Seems like quite a fun brand. Hopefully they're not woke AF. That would be upsetting. It's too much of that. But anyway, yeah, Beaver Town. Oh, they do an advent calendar. That's sick. Okay, they've even got Mike's unboxing and Merc. <laughs> yeah, there is an old CNI on the bones one. Is that the one I had bones? It wasn't it. Yeah, I'll have a pint of bones. <laughs> oh dear, it was good. I actually really enjoyed it. I may have to invest in some of that for Christmas. That'd be very nice. But then you want—I want it in a pint glass, like draft. It's—it's it's weird because it's got a very nice citrus. I like citrusy lager. I've read another one. And it said that um, it's got like mango or something in it, or pineapple. That's the one that Dave Aiken's one about in there, the neck oil. Hmm. Alright, Mabes, got to be back up. Dave Aiken's a neck oil, that's my bet. You doing that? Yeah, it was close. Oh. It was close. Hey, Mabes. <laughs> Getting back in your box? Bone smuggler. No, no, a letter was in earlier, I think. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's been quiet. No, she's been quite. That's it, whack daddy in the face for your tail. Get out of it, yes. chair. Don't have a poop. That'd be bad. Fireworks. JB says, Mike, I am sorry you still have not warmed to Asus. I am. I've made the I've made the step of actually buying a couple of them. So I was I'm kind of in the right going in the right direction. I do like the fact that the um, fan expert is now inside Armory Crate. That is pretty cool. Because previously, if you wanted to control the fans, like you had Armory Crate, but then you had to install Fan Expert separately as part of AI Suite. And it's like. My like Armory Crate is full of a load of tosh. It really is. Most of it in there is useless. But it has, I think, personally, been a little bit. Um, <clears throat> 
a little bit over bloated, but they have thinned it out slightly. It's still a little bit confusing what is going on where. And I think they still need to work on it. I don't think it's as clean an interface as MSI. The MSI interface, I think, is possibly the market leader, but it does lack some features. But most of it is catered for. Asus, I think, are doing quite a good job. Uh, ASRock, absolutely awful. Their software, don't know. And uh, Gigabytes is okay. Yeah, maybe it's going to fall off the table. I'm a damn crazy fool. Um, yeah, Gigabytes, their software looks like it's been designed about 10 years ago, which actually, it, it, most of it has. So, um, hi, Chris. My, my regrets at the moment with the Asus are predominantly from the problems I've experienced today, which I've mentioned a little bit earlier in the stream. Essentially, there was a catastrophic failure which nuked my operating system. Now, whether it was a Windows thing, it appeared to be a BIOS thing because I was getting the error literally after I just changed some fan speed settings, rebooted, and it went into the BIOS safe mode which was really weird. And it did it numerous times. Kath was there as a witness because she was literally sat behind the camera watching me record the video. We were about to go on to do the Windows desktop stuff as the follow-up for the video. And it took me another hour and a half, two hours to actually get the PC back up and running after doing a, uh, a restore from our NAS for the backup image. So yeah, it's been... Um, but we managed Trauma. to finish the video and get down to co-op on time. Finish the video and got down to co-op, yeah. Uh, new or used board. It is a new board, I believe. Was it new? I can't remember, actually. No, the B650, that was from Amazon. From uh, That I got off eBay. So, yeah, this is this is eBuyer. So, yeah, this was from eBuyer in the UK. Bought from their eBay site. Using the code something 20. Goofy or groovy or something. Something to do with um, like Halloween or some crap like that. So yeah, that was a new board. This one was a factory returned one, but it appeared to be sealed, so I have no idea. But I haven't tested that one yet. So I don't know. Uh, Chris Harper says, I still get the occasional failure to post with my X6MT E Tough. That is Asus Full or just AM5, bit of both, I think. I'm very confident that it is something to do with mountain pressure. I think that is it. I think we really need to get some of the other big bods in the community. It would be really nice to have some form of um, PCI Express like boot card so you can see the exact progress and see what is going on. But I don't think there is one that would analyse it in that kind of level. It would just tell you there is a problem with this, there is a problem with that. I'm pretty sure it's down to mounting process, <clears throat> mounting pressure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stuart's back. Read it. Hey Stuart, what did he say? Uh, I'm back, folks. Just had. Unannounced callers to the house here. I sent them on their way and told them to make an appointment next time for Saturday nights because Mike's live stream. <laughs> Brilliant. Bless your heart. And hello, William Bodie as well. How are you doing? I did say hello earlier, I think. I don't think you said hello to anyone. I haven't said hello to many people, but thank you for all joining us on this Saturday evening. I am, yeah, Freedom House says 1984, sorry, Freedom House 1984 says, I don't know, DDR5 training issues are real. I don't even know if it's the DDR5. I'm really not sure what is going on. It is really, actually, one, two, is there, have I got sound kind of this bloody monitor as well? No, I can't have. It didn't have sound, does it? It has got loudspeaker. I can keep on hearing something echoing back at me. This is my own voice, or is it just Heineken refreshing the vocal parts that other bears did not reach, ever? David Andrew says, hello Mike and Kath, and all the other mothers. How you doing? 
In a weird accent says, Intel is brilliant for me. I've got to say, my Intel video editing system over there is absolutely rock solid, like ridiculously so. I've done all kinds of weird shit to that, and uh, it just keeps on working. No matter what I install, actually, and how rough I am with it, it just keeps on working. Whereas the AM5 one is kind of like kid gloves. Uh, William's saying, question mark, are you moving away from MSI? No, I've still got an MSI motherboard in my Intel rig currently, so I'm not going to be leaving MSI. I'm not really one of those people that kind of says, right, I'm not using a product for a specific reason, really. Like, sometimes I do if they've been real asshats. Even back in the day when MSI were having issues where they were selling graphics cards directly and sculpting graphics cards, I wasn't going to ditch MSI because I enjoyed their products that I was using. I had them, so I'm hardly going to change them just for that. It's a bit pointless. But I did get to the point where I um, Asus, I felt for me personally, were failing on the, the three main things. Software being Armoury Crate, AI Suite, Fan Expert, um, pricing, and also they're having issues with uh, quality control. And those are three kind of big things. Like quality control, if the price is right and everything else is okay, you can kind of say, oh, fair enough, I'll have to RMA a board or something. It happens. But, yeah. I quite like using ASUS to some extent. It's, if you get a board that works well, it will work well for a long time. They do last. Yes, Kath? In a weird accent. Uh, in a weird accent. Intel MSI for the win. Just not AM5 now at this point of time. Uh, can I send a video for you to watch sometime later in the Discord? Um, potentially, what is it related to? Um, <clears throat> yes, you can. We can post videos in the in the Discord. That's that's no problem at all. Just post a link or something. You can certainly have a look. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. If you've got weird stuff going on, feel free. Uh, Sim eighty three says I'm using an ASUS Z seven ninety Tough Gaming Wi Fi DDR five with a thirteen six hundred K and a thermal right contact frame. It's been rock solid so far. Touch wood. Yeah, I've got the uh, contact frame. I'm um, actually have I? Yes, I think I have got my contact frame on my uh, Intel rig. Kieran says ASUS never helped with warranties. That is true. Um, ASUS, I, I actually feel that I don't think any of the companies, other than NZXT. When it comes to help and support, NZXT have been absolutely amazing. Um, they've constantly kept in contact with me when I've had pre problems previously. Very friendly, give you an email address, open to contact and stuff like that. Very, very good. But, um, yeah, it's a shame that the other manufacturers aren't saying. I think a lot of them, the others are a little bit too big now, or they're too kind of splintered off. So, like, MSI USA, arguably, is much better for support than MSI UK, because it's a much smaller fragment of the market. Tony Cheers, Tony. Yeah, so I think ASUS, ASUS have got a lot of things to learn, and I think all the manufacturers have, but realistically, we're all getting to that point where, kind of, there isn't really any company that is perfect for all instances. You've, it's always going to be a bit of a mix and match. So the whole point of having an ecosystem is that you can settle into that ecosystem and like feel comfortable with your purchase. But I don't think there's any that are. Because Corsair, although they do a lot... Maisie, what are you doing? You think you're Kylie Minogue or something, going round and round and round. You've got itchy leg. Do you want me to have a go? I could do that. Do you want me to help? There's a flea there, isn't there? I get him. No, I didn't get him. All right, I'm useless. I suck. Yeah. <laughs> JB says, my son has never had issues with the three Asus boards he owns. I don't think... Like I say, with my current AM5 setup, I don't think that Asus is the problem. I think the problem is LGA. 
And that problem resides pretty much firmly and squarely with AMD. They designed the bloody thing and left everyone else to deal with the fallout. I don't think they're ready for it. I really don't. I think that, well, I've said it before, AM5 should have been pins like AM4, just bigger or more condensed. I actually hate building new systems now with the LGA because what is under that socket cover is so delicate. Making Even making videos, YouTube videos, I'm like really paranoid that because I'm concentrating on the camera, the lighting, make sure that everything's done, you drop the processor or drop a screw or a screwdriver onto that LGA pin grid, you're basically screwed. And your expensive motherboard, because there ain't any cheap ones, is toast. In the old days, with like LJ775 Intel, if you bent a pin, more than likely you get a screwdriver, you could probably bend it back. Nail it wasn't file. too bad. Nail file, Nail screw, yeah, anything. But these Nail. days, there's 1,700 pins in there in the same size as what we had previously. It's like 50% extra. If you bend something, you're basically toast. Yeah, Dave Aiken says there, you have a slim chance of saving AM4 damage because the pins you can kind of see and like, yeah. Remember the processor I got from um, CEX? I think it was a 3000G or something, and it was completely demolished in transit. And Calf, bless her heart, straightened out all the pins and that thing went into a motherboard and it was great, it worked. If you did that with an AM5 uh, board, you're absolutely toast. A letter says, so if you bend the pins on an AM5 board, it's okay to put jelly on it. You could probably do anything. Chris says, everything I buy are used bargains, so warranty never comes into it. That's a good point, actually. If you can make a decent enough saving on a used part, then the warranty side of it is kind of mute anyway. Irene Wolfman says, the amount of people are leaving something on the keyboard of their laptop and then closing the lid, AM5 is the same deal. Easy to damage. Yeah, and actually harder to repair. At least with a laptop, changing the screen is pretty much simple. Yeah. Dave says, Surgeon Calf the Hero. Yeah, David Under says, AM4 pins can even be resoldered. Yeah, if you're really clever or really accurate with soldering, it can be done. Andy Archer says, I posted in the chat, Northridge fix looking, um, looking for a board with bent pins. It's... It's kind of scary, isn't it? It really is kind of scary that this stuff is getting damaged so easy. David Higgins says, Caps Backy would get stuck in an LJ system repair. <laughs> it probably would. I literally, like, because we've got cats, even something as fine as a cat hair falling into your motherboard could potentially mean that your system isn't going to post. That's how thin those pins are getting. They are ridiculously small. So anything in there which it obstructs or even stops the processor seating is kind of dangerous. While Bill says LGA is shite, end of. It's a very good idea, LGA, but with the pin density as it is now, it's a super bad idea. Like look at the pressure that they put on it to make sure it connects for Intel and the 600 series boards that were bending because of the pressure. It's nuts. JB's gonna get air cleaned up. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Clocks go back tonight. Oh, excellent. That means the uh, the Fitbit videos will get a ton of hits. Again. Again. Dave says, that's why Mike Shaves has said, trying to limit hair ingress, he's not really bold. I'm not. A letter says, I think they're making motherboards more complex, so more people will take their PCs to the shop, kind of like they did with cars. I don't know. 
I think they're just there's the obvious thing like all companies have to basically buy down that's oh, cable uh, they have to buy down to the shareholders they've got so they've got to release something new and exciting and if they can't release something new and exciting the shareholders get pissed off so they kind of they're fudging their way to these little miniature victories of fastest processor or first to 4k or first to 8k or whatever it is and it's pointless it's absolutely pointless in a weird, weird accent, Mike, is the Z790 prone to bending issues? No. The 700 series have got much stronger um, sockets, so they don't seem to be. And also, you, well, normally you'd hope that a, seven, a Z series board seven. would have a seven. A Z series motherboard would have more layers to the PCB, so therefore not allowing it to flex as much. Stuart Cleary says, WTF, my seven-year-old 3700... Sorry, yeah, my... What did I say? Seven. Wow, brain. Uh, what the fuck? Sorry. My four-year-old 3700X Asus Prime Z... Oh, God. X570. 3070 Ti fans ramped up and the stream froze. That's not bad. Uh, Dave says, are we seeing more issues or are we just seeing the result of more news outlets and higher than ever DIY PC ownership. I wouldn't say it was as high as... Wellie Bob says, your keyboard in the back, no RGB. What the hell, Michael? Oh no, it goes to sleep. I have to press something. It doesn't stop the stream. Yeah. Oh God, I'm back. My back's on the verge of going again, so I've been trying not to bend and do stuff. Here, it is RGB'd up. There you go. I did earlier actually have the other one that Bob sent, the KT68 Pro, which has got RGB up the uh, wazoo. But, actually, where did I put it? Did I put it back up there? I, I still haven't reviewed it yet. I don't know if there is more PC ownership as such, because years ago, you know, everyone used oh, to have a computer, wouldn't they? Yeah. Whereas now, you know, most people have laptops or oh. tablets instead. Yeah, actually, I, I would, I would say a lot of people now are going over to laptops and uh, mobiles iPads seem to be dropping off. Not so many people buying laptops. Andy Archer says, lifting too many batteries at work, Mike. No, I have no idea what it is. I just, I think I just slept funny last night and my back's just, it's a little bit like, oh, it's on the verge of going, Sorry, like trapping a nerve. There, How dare you? <laughs> Mike, have you been lifting big cases? I have actually lifted two big cases this week because uh, I'm happy to say I finally cleared out the uh, the cases which were causing a conundrum in our other room. Let's unplug this. So we now got room for the kittens. So yeah. Well, that is it. Because they've got the kittens in the front room, I didn't want the cases in there because it's just another thing which gets in the way. All right, let's have some proper. Let's have some RGB. Oh my days, broken it already. There we go. There you go, Welly Bob. Yeah, we, we now have RGB. Now I've got a quite catapult. The RGB intensifies. I'll accidentally miss it get your head. <laughs> <laughs> Cats like boxes, they do, but these are big boxes. Tomorrow it's gonna be cold and I've got I've, I'll be working in the shop, so I because it's getting colder, it's gonna be wiper blades, bulbs and batteries tomorrow. Now we're all blind. Hey, if you don't like it, blame Bob. He sent it. Alessa says, wow, no way I could ever type on that keyboard. You get used to it. Uh, Droner says, just joined. I'm an ASUS fanboy. Welcome to the party. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping that my, uh, my transference to the dark side of ASUS is going to make this system more reliable. Ugly Bob says, it's just like I've dropped some LSD or something. You sent it! You nutter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. You're not allowed to call someone a nutter. You have to call them a feckin' Egypt. Ugly Bob. <laughs> Stuart says, 69 watching out. Uh -huh. 
Right, so 70 on there. I've lost someone. Sometimes you can't even put ugly bob on there, can you? It thinks it's been insulted. Yeah, if you type the word ugly bob, it's, you get warned by YouTube. You're not allowed to do it. Right, I'm going to put this away. Oh, there's a plastic case there, isn't there? I've been meaning to use this keyboard for ages. But it is just so RGB, it's just nuts. Uh, oh, that goes on. Click on first or after. What's the rule come to where you've got plastic covers for your keyboard? Just in case you get Marmite in it or something, aren't they? Uh, for those of you outside of the UK, Marmite is a, a yeast based product that you spread like Vegemite. I can't, I think. That, that's the wrong plastic bag. That is that one. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, well, Brewer's it's yeast. Brewer's. Thought it was beef extract. That's not the right one, is it? Got that bottle. <laughs> Losing it. You should go on the friction factor. I need to go on something. The diet, maybe. <laughs> I'd love to see you going over that. Cargo rigging stuff, what's it called? Oh, the camo nets and stuff. Yeah, you'd be so funny. <laughs> imagine, imagine me on that friction factor. Uh, it's not that funny. It's a match in me. I would love. I might have to watch. Some I may have to say the f word. Oh, imagine you. <laughs> they always look so unfit and they probably were quite fit, right? Yeah. Right. Does that fit in there? Yeah, that's close enough. Right. Where does the cable go? Boring, wasn't it? It's just that whole. Why did someone get a head start? Because they were like, I don't know. Well, that? they had a head start if they had more points, didn't they? Or less points ah, or something. Yeah. Or if they were like disabled or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's a way above my pay grade. Right. Um, oh, I can't see that. Marshmallow. Oh, that's gone. No heater under the counter. Andy Archer, you do not know my boss in the shop at all. He is so tight, he squeaks when he walks. <laughs> Honestly, he is, um, yeah, he doesn't like spending money. In fact, the shop doesn't have any actual heating at all. Like literally anything. There's no heating system of any sort, shape, type, whatever. It's basically just an old, old building which has absorbed a lot of moisture, it gets really damp, and it's really cold. It doesn't have hot water. Well, it kind of does, but you've got to wait for a while for it. It's good, good fun. Anyway. Ugly Bob says, my PC is darker than my soul. Good work. Especially this time of year when it is dark out as well. <laughs> Deathstroke says, I'm having an epileptic fit just watching that. It is quite intense, isn't it? I like it. I want to know how I can get that to go along there and say stuff. It is actually wireless as well, so you can get it into Bluetooth mode and you can still use it. So I could actually replace this one over here. Oh, have I done the volume? Oh no, I haven't got it set to volume. Oh, actually, I haven't got the uh, receiver plugged in, have I, for that? So it won't do it anyway. Oh, I've done something on the top though. I'm not sure what. Oh, that's the battery level. We plug that back in. Up. Yeah. Uh, what mode's that in now? That's, uh, that's Bluetooth mode because it flashed blue then. Yeah, that's Bluetooth mode. I don't know. It's all too. No. Let's put it there. So it's just visible, but not. Too distracting. <laughs> Not too distracting. <laughs> Bob's fault. It blends in with your hair. It does. It takes yeah, it takes mine off my hairline. <laughs> Bradley says that keyboard made me think there was something special in my dinner. <laughs> ah dear. Stuart says, I thought that was an Irish thing. Well it is. I listened to uh, the Richie Allen show. Which uh, he is an Irish person. Persian? Well, it's James Bond territory then. And uh, yeah, 
he um, he says it quite a lot. Oh, someone said about the keyboard then. I missed that. Where was it? I've scrolled too far. Uh, Ugly Bob says, I actually bought the, uh, the Mechanique K500 and the K52 keyboards. Uh, they are great. Yeah, they've got some really nice switches on them. Really nice switches. What's that? That's the K500, isn't it? I think. No, that's the KT68. What's the KT500? I think I've got that up there. Oh well. Anyway. Freedom House. Uh, I am a fast board in Freedom House, Freedom House, Freedom House, Freedom House. I worked in a shop with no heating. Fellow mechanic started the car on fire doing a throttle body cleaning. Fire extinguishers were empty and the hoses froze. That was my first day. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Letta says, you people who still have souls, what's that like? Hmm, good question. Tank says, uh, Mike's unboxing keycaps, when? Probably never. I'm not a fan of those custom keycaps, I'll be honest with you. I've seen a few around. I, it's a kind of nice idea, uh, but I like, like a, a keyboard to be legible. And some of the custom keyboards aren't. I would actually, if I had the choice, I would like double up the legends on this to make them double fat so you can see what they are. I like the Corsair keyboards. They've got some really nice legends on them. Double up my... Ugly Bob says, if it stops questions about Hoovers and bloopers, then it's money well spent. <laughs> oh, dear. That has a lot of RGB, actually, isn't it? Let's remove the mouse back. There's a lot of RGB going on there. David Aiken says, Mike's unboxing limited edition thermal take case. Come on, make it happen. Ah, actually, thermal take. That is something which I should have mentioned earlier. Well, actually, yes, I should do. For months, weeks, years, I've been talking about it. And I finally, finally managed to get hold of. If I can take all this crap off. It's not crap. It's, uh, it's thermal takes power supplies, but... Oh God, there goes the back. At long last. Oh no, it's empty, sorry, it's fine. Oh God, my bra my back, I'm gonna stand up. My, my, my brack, you said it in English. Uh, Thermal Take S100 TG in the snow edition. which I've been talking about getting for oh so long. So I finally got hold of one of these and I have actually ordered a micro ATX board, stupidly in my rush to try and get something done and get some content on the go. I've ordered a MSI B650 motherboard, micro ATX to go with a AM5 7500F. So that is going to go really badly wrong, clearly, because it's AM5. Do you need another beer? And it's DDR5. Do, 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 do. I need something a bit stronger. One builds wonder. Did you get that? What's that? Oh, I'm back. Did you need another beer? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Well, Bill. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm right, thank you. Oh, do you want another beer, mate? When Bob says Mike's IKEA worktop desk holds many a surprise underneath. You are not kidding. It's like stacked under here. I've got all kinds of stuff. I got the um the Streamplify mount arm, which at some point I will actually use for something constructive. I've got Thermal Take Smart BM3 power supply. I've got whatever that is, uh Tough Liquid Ultra 360. Don't drag me out from under there. No. Uh, what else have I got here? All sorts. Oh, another power supply. 
GFA3 1050. Oh, these are getting heavy. And a GF3 1000 watt, which was the one I think I took out of my editing PC to swap over for a white power supply for some reason. It's getting a bit silly with stuff here at the moment. Most of these, if not all of this stuff, has to go back at some point. But I need to finish off doing various different things with it before they can. And there's also another thermal take 360mm AIO there as well, which I need to deal with. Yeah, it's all getting a little bit, uh, a little bit out of hand, let's say. And I can't put that back in there. Anyway, so one day Uggs will pop out from the desk. It will be like a scene out of um, TV Burp. Where I'll be talking away, and then all of a sudden, out from the desk comes Ugly Pop. <laughs> that would be pretty good. That desk is propped up with tear soaked COVID priced 6500 XTs Mike bought for 200 quid each. £229, I think they were. <laughs> or more. I'm pretty sure one of them was 229 uh, Mookie EMC says, Is the thermal tech case a mini tower? It is a micro ATX, not a mini tower, micro ATX. And the archer says you need a sock puppet. Oh god, that would get me into the front. What's that? Hello, it's me! Oh. Box unboxings over on! You did do it a little bit like that with some microphones. Uh, there is a review I did of a microphone set. I think it was for Boya. But we've got the and, and, it, and at the end of the video, I was doing like the two puppets thing with the microphone foam shields. It's very strange. Very, nobody commented, well, very few commented on it. Now, it's getting darker, so it makes sense at the moment to go with solar powered devices. I've got to do a review on this thing. I'm actually looking forward to this because this is a solar powered Cell Go. Now, the weird thing this is, I love these IMU cameras. I genuinely do. We've got them all in the house and outside. But the thing is, this one's got something called vlog mode. So you can actually take it off the stand and give it to your kids or something, or your cat or your dog, I don't know, stick it in their mouth. You can press the vlog button on the bottom and you can actually carry it around like a camera and just record yourself doing stuff. And you can send it to either the device or to your phone or something, which is a really weird thing to do. But it has got like a magnetic, where is it? It's in here somewhere. There's a magnetic main. I think that's it there. No, that's not it. Where's the magnet main? There's a magnet main that goes in there. So you can basically just pop it off. Or is it off there? Or be off there. Anyway, it's very cool. It's basically an outdoor security camera, but it comes with a um, a solar charging station. So you never have to change the batteries. It's got a built-in battery. Recharge it with that. Happy days. And then you can take it off with them. Uh, no, I don't think that works quite like that. There is a screw you can put in, like a security screw at the bottom, so it can't be lifted off. So, uh, yeah, you can push that in. So it's a little... Ah, I get it. I understand. I understand now. So, I'm, this is a learning curve for me. So, say you got it up on your wall, wherever, outside. There's a little button there, or a screw, which you can tighten right up. So if you press it in, it disengages that bit. So that will stay on the wall. Stay where you're bloody told. And then thank you can you, just, William you William. can take it around and just, yeah, thank you, William Bodie. Um, yeah, press the vlog button and uh, record stuff. It's got any power in it. Oh yeah, it's coming on. making noises yeah it's got a PIR and also I think it's like a 4k camera or 2k camera but I've actually got a similar one to this already in the garden but it hasn't got the um, Sega it hasn't got the solar panel which is a real shame because every now and then we've got to go outside bring it in the house plug it into a micro USB and charge it for for like five six hours because it's got a really slow charging rate on it <clears throat> at least with this 
I can stick it up in the garden and make use of the sunshine. Even when it isn't like a full on sunny day, it will still use some solar energy to charge it up. So yeah, I'm, that's very cool. So I have a review coming up very soon on that. As soon as I get it installed. Uh, no. I've had some fake GoPros over the years, but I've never had a genuine article. GoPros are pretty cool though. I think Angel tried to get me to buy one. Actually, we did have, uh, yeah, when we were at Casualty, we did have one. And I was tempted to borrow it on numerous occasions, but I never bothered. I've not been that interested in the GoPro. Oh, there's just too much stuff in this box. I mean, you're putting too much stuff in here, making it hard for me to put stuff away. Very good. I'm you. Buy one. Actually, buy loads. They're good. Hello. Oh. Yeah. Fake GoPro's called fake amateur. No, <laughs> go, go amateur. Go, go amateur. Yeah. Go cheap. Uh, truck fans coming with a question. Least favorite Intel CPU or CPUs? Ooh, that's an interesting one. There's been a lot of Intel CPUs, which I've. Actually, I would say, arguably, the, the 14 series. I don't think... They're much like they don't have a purpose. Which is a shame. The Celerons, I think... No, actually, they, David, I would disagree, unfortunately, with that. Because I think... At the time when the Celerons actually first came out, in the very... was it? 97... I think 97, 98, maybe? No, probably 97. Uh, the Celerons were actually a really good idea because there was a lot of people, especially enthusiasts, who were getting into wanting to build their own computer. And finding the money for an official Pentium processor was difficult. So actually being able to buy a Celeron which had a reduced cache, reduced um, frequencies as well, I think, and reduced front side bus, it was a good entry point, so you could still buy an Intel-based processor and not have to go down the Cirix line or the AMD route. So you could still have that AMD platform, but cut back a little bit. And I actually personally owned a few Celerons. I had a 266, I think. I'm pretty sure I had a 300 at some point, and probably a 333 as well. I had quite a few along the lines. Not so much in the later days, like the 433s, uh, the 500, 700, 800s, that sort of stuff. I kind of avoided those a little bit. But at the time when they came out, I think they were actually genuinely a good idea. And some of them actually were pretty cool because you could overclock the seller on 66 front side bus to 100 megahertz. And it gave it a little bit of a lease of life. So it wasn't too bad. But yeah, they, the Celerons weren't great. They always had that thing where there's always that stigma attached to it. So if you said, oh, I've built a new PC, what processor have you got? If you said you had a Celeron on it, you could almost kind of wait for them. Oh, God. Uh, Truck Fan says, have you had any recent RMAs? Not store returns, but actual RMAs to the manufacturer. No, not recently. Uh, not that I can think of. Come get very close with the NZXT motherboard. David Thompson says, a wise man once said, any product with pro in its title is only fit for amateur use. It's not too bad, actually. I like that. And the weird access is how about these new CPUs with just e-cores? Sounds like a good deal. There's some new um, AMD processors for uh, laptops, which have one performance core and three efficiency cores. That sounds really bizarre. But they're saying that the, um, the efficiency cores on the new Zen 4C platform, basically no one will know that they're efficiency cores. 
to the to the human eye and to the end user, you won't know their efficiency cores, which is quite a, a um, quite something. Oh yeah, the sixteen hundred XT RMA for that. That's true. Yeah, the sixteen hundred MSI sixty and the sixty nine hundred XT went back to eBuyer from eBuyer back to MSI, and yes. Uh, William Bailey, did the storm hit Bristol? Not really. Um, there was a day where it got a little bit windy chives. and our chives are swaying a little. But no, in general, it was kind of nothing, nothing much, really. <laughs> I've said, Calf said about this before, because we don't... In Bristol, it's a relatively flat city no. in comparison. And we're surrounded by... got the kind of like Yorkshire on one side... You've got wells on the other side. You've got the valleys and stuff. So we're kind of in a dip in between. So we get crap TV reception, but we also get sh relatively well sheltered from the the, uh, the weather because it tends to kind of go over rather than across us. If you're at more coastal areas like Western Supermare, um, Breen Down, that sort of thing, then you are going to suffer more of coastally. But And as you go further out towards Thornbury and stuff like that, in towards Gloucester, then you're going to suffer. South Bristol, possibly a little bit more so, but where we are, we're nestled right in the kind of the heart of North Bristol, and generally it's okay. The weather doesn't affect us a great deal. Even when you get massive snow drifts here, they're not too bad at all. So we're uh, we're kind of okay. David Aiken says I saw Greg's wrapper blowing around violently. Yeah, not to say that there aren't some people in the country that suffered uh, tremendously for it. It's, we, we're fortunate and we didn't really notice it, to be honest with you, as much as we would. There was a few nights where the rain came down. It's like, oh, that's, it's raining quite hard. Uh, it really helped that we had a, we had a drain. Block. Yeah, our sewer blocked um, for some reason. I blame the yellow stickered pasties and sandwiches for blocking it up, but it's another story. Uh, but the drains blocked up, so we were having problems with that, and we had that heavy rain, so that made the rain water levels come up higher. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's not been too bad at all. We wouldn't have known our drain was blocked apart from the neighbour. To be honest, would we? Uh, while Bill says I'm on the south coast and we got bugger all. <laughs> yeah, it's been really weird. Andy Archer says, has anybody ever used those low-spec gold processors in the motherboard? No, I've avoided those like the plague. Especially laptops with them in. Chris Arthur says, I found Corsair pretty good for after-sale support. Uh, bought spare parts from them cheap too. Yeah, your uh, Corsair is pretty decent. Kieran says, I've just seen loads of people's wheelie bins going down the road. Wow, that's some pretty good stories. Right, I'm going to grab a drink, I think. Ow, my back. Oh, Poppy, move. <laughs> or as I stand on you. Oh, ow, pain. I'm just going to... Where's that bottle? There we are. Oh. That'll do. William Bodie's mint cream gift from ages ago. Or some? Oh, there we go. This was a gift from uh, William Bodie many moons ago. This is a uh, mint chocolate cream. Supposed to put it in with coffee, I think. I think he said Coca Cola as well. Come on, Okay. There's nothing moving in there. It's good. Mm, that is nice. It's like um, mint Baileys. If anyone's ever had Baileys, it's kind of like a coffee and mint. No, not coffee. Chocolate, hot chocolate and mint. Mint hot chocolate with alcohol. It's all right. Do you know what? Mm. Oh, 
That is quite boozy. Well, Bill says you look like a right alky. Thank you very much. Freedom House says I've had Baileys. It's good with coffee. The Baileys is awesome. At Christmas, you get all the Baileys custom flavours out. And what's that light in there? You got RGB in it. Oh no, someone's coming in the garage. There were car lights. Poppy, stay away. Uh, you need the belt. I need the. I don't. I think it's, it's not the belt because the pain is lower down. I think it's just where I've been sat in a so stupid need position. Baileys belt. I know. That's what I was thinking of, but I don't think that would help in this position, in this instance, because it's not that kind of back pain. Oh, <laughs> it's just me being unfit, I think. I could also say it does look quite nice. It's it's actually quite good. There you go. Hopefully you can see it now. See exactly what it is. And it's got quite a quite a nice kick to it. It says there, perfect in Heischer chocolate, which means hot chocolate, I think. Because you can speak fluent German. I can speak fluent German in the dark with the lights off. 17%, so it's not too bad. I don't believe anything that they said in those scripts on RTL4 now. You don't know German. Uh, truck fans asking have you ever lost a cpu socket cover and later needed it for something no i'm religiously like whenever i take a motherboard apart no matter what it is i always take the cpu socket covers and uh, the retention mechanisms and all that kind of stuff always 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 put them back into the motherboard bag and put it back into the motherboard box if you don't do that you're heading into adamant it territory which he had today where they're looking around for screws and bits and pieces for cases and they're doing like the constant swirl of stuff, which is a nightmare. Excuse me. Well, Bill says her and Doris likes Amarula. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, David Aiken says, I even save the plastic cover films. I do, actually. There's some under here. So when you get a CPU cooler, and there's a couple there put together, because I always forget where I'm going to put them. So there is a square one. There is a round one. So that's going to be a thermal tape one, because they're generally round. Uh, I think there's another one there. They're like those things I put on my lids at night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's another one there. There is one from the back of a Zero Smart Fan. So if you've got a thermal tape power supply, you'd have seen that sticker. But yeah, I would quite often stick them on there. It's like, I'll, I'll need them one day, but I don't need it right now. So I'll just stick them there. I think there's some. More likely to be chewing gum under here. No, it's not. Rick H says, I just put masking tape over the CPU socket. That'll do it. Truck fan says Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Wee oui, bitte. That's, that's completely wrong, actually, isn't it? Wee oui, bitte. That's, that's, French. that's French. Oh dear, and bitter means thank you. So I said, yes, thank you. Oh my god. Is that all pure French or just half French, half German? Half French, half German. That's the trouble, see. When you go to school, those bastards, they make you learn two languages at the same time. And it's like, I struggle with one. Like English, then to throw on French and German, it's like, wow, that's not going to happen, is it? So, uh, so in yeah, uh, I can't think. Oh, German! It's been so long since I've actually had to speak or use any German. Can you Sprachen Sie Deutsch bitte? Yeah, sehr gut. Find that bottle. And then yes, you very say... good. Yeah. Andy Archer says, Je m'appelle Mike. Je m'appelle Mike. Je suis. Je suis. Je suis fiche unique. 
feel sorry for me. <laughs> someone, someone will know what that meant and actually put it in the chat. Actually, I've got, got to try and remember how old I am now, hang on. So, I don't think I learned that high in German, a uh, French. Uh, I can't even remember how to count in French. Under trois, Under trois quatre. Six, five, six, six, so, what, what, what is 40? Quatorze. Yeah. Didn't get that high. So, that would be... Bonjour, je suis Mike, j'ai... 14 new fond. New fond. I can't remember the other stuff. I can remember some of it in German. I think. Guten Tag, ich heiße Mike. Ich wohne im Dynend. Das ist ein Wort von Bristol. See, still got it. Um, I can't remember the other stuff. Your baby says Mike did speak with a German on the phone. Was it this year or last? Um, that was last year, I think. I, don't I do, that. I do vaguely remember that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, languages. I would love to be able to speak fluently in another language. I think that'd be really good. So many people do it across the world, and I. I... Congrats. I. I just. I really struggle. I, I think I could learn it when the kids did it. Oh, there's Popsy. But no, it's just even harder. Truck fan, I'm not sure. That sounds like something rude. Come on, Mike. David says Mub Oktoberfest incoming. Truck fan speaks Norwegian and US English here. And hunks of Deutsch. I think if I went to France or Germany, I could probably just about survive for a, a very short while. On my very very limited knowledge of the language I think I would struggle I'd love to be able to speak Spanish I'd love to be able to speak um, well Mexican I suppose is Spanish isn't it I think is Mexican Spanish it's, yeah it's kind well, of it's like slightly. slightly different but similar yeah I think I'd like to speak those kind of Mexican stroke Spanish we only get learned that ones sort of area, I think, would be nice. Stuart says, come on, ça va? Come on, ça va? Um, what does that mean? Come on. Ça va? God, I can't remember. Yeah, Mexican es Espanol. Because a lot of Americans speak Spanish, don't they? As their kind of second language. We do have a passport, baby. Dutch Jan says, come to the Netherlands. Almost everyone can speak English. Which is more than can be said for England. Yeah, David says most people have trouble speaking English. I oh, know. Stuart Clary, how are you? Oh, come on, ça va. Ah, that's what... Yeah, because our German teacher, I'm sure... St no, that would be... Come on, ça va. That's French, isn't it? Mike, you said you're 14. <laughs> Cators. Oh, I can't even pronounce it. Yeah, Cators, because we would have been at school when we learned it, and I probably was 14, so that's why I remember it. No, because I said, oh yeah, because I said Cators Nuff, so that means I was 149, <laughs> I think. <laughs> or I was 14.9. That's more like my weight. <laughs> English is hard. It is. Come on, Vaz 2, je t'aime. Aleta says, my girlfriend is Mexican. Mostly, she cusses me out in Spanish. <laughs> I know how to say freeze you under arrest in Spanish. Auto, están estorados. Very good. Dutch Jan says, I understand every language. That's so cool. That's awesome. Dutch Jan, I just have no idea what they're talking about. I know. I what was I watched the other day? Well, I'll say the other day, it was a couple of weeks ago. There was a film on um, Amazon Video, and I started watching the intro to it, and it was like really good. And I was like, "This is a really nice action film." And then it got to the point where they're talking, and then the subtitles come up, and it's like, "Oh no, it's in foreign. I can't watch that." But I actually did watch it to the very end. And it was quite good, but I don't. That's the thing. That's the first time I've ever watched a movie in foreign with subtitles. Sorry, 
But then all those, that Pablo thingy one and all that, that had all the subtitles on. Hmm. Oh, what, the Pablo Escobar? Yeah, because I'm squinting yeah. to read them. Eat clothes in the house, how are you doing? David Aiken says, excuse me, David Aiken says I speak fluent Canadian, can't tell you anything about, about it. <laughs> Problem with French, you can say the same thing multiple ways depending on the gender, time and place. Yeah, Christ, imagine how difficult it is to speak French now, now that there's like a million different genders. Like normally there's like something's feminine or masculine. Or nothing in French. There's like un, un, and an, I think it is. So un is masculine, un is feminine, and on or an is kind of nondescript. So what the hell do they do now? Wow. That must be hard work. Better wear those strips on your mouth tonight. You better not snore in. I think I've got your beer jacket on. It's really warm in here now. What temperature mm. is it now? Oh, that was bloody lovely. What temperature is it now? Uh, twenty-one point seven degrees Celsius. Feels warmer. What was it earlier? Twenty-one point three. So that's gone up a little bit. That's gone up half a degree. And the artist says, no worries, tables are still female. Un tabla. La monkey dans la tabla. So what about cats? The if monkey is on the table. What do you call a cat, la and la? Yeah, be... Depending on la frame, flame. La chen. La flame. Chat, aren't they? Un maisy. Un flame. <laughs> Un poppy. <laughs> Oh dear. What the F is Mike drinking? It's, it was a uh, liqueur thing. Mint chocolate cream. Bloody good. Very good. Le chat has gone to le... See, we're multilingual here. We like to encourage our foreign viewers. Oh dear. So she's like, I'm just trying to stretch the stream out to at least 11 o'clock, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Has anyone got any questions? Yeah. Has anyone got any questions which would be related to computing rather than multiple gender French lessons? That's hyper chocolate. David Aitken, I think I speak fluent bus. We did have someone like that in our chat recently. Dutch Jan says, Var haben we het Anglic over here? We don't have that over here? Is that what that means? I think so. That isn't that, is it? The. Well, Bill says, question, have you upgraded to version 23H2? That's a very good question. I'm going to find out right now. Uh, Alright, system. Um, <clears throat> should say here, shouldn't it? No, I am on version twenty. I didn't know that was a thing. Twenty-two H two, and it still doesn't want to update to twenty-three whatever it is. And it says there installed on the third of the eleventh. And it is. Let's go Windows update. <clears throat> Check for updates. Security intelligence update for Microsoft Defender antivirus. Yeah, doesn't seem that it wants to uh, let me have 23H2 for some reason. Cold Bill's asked for the second time, where is it? What Bill? Do, 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 do. Have you upgraded to. No, I haven't. Irie Wolfman says, Why does Corsair sell the same RAM with different names? For example, CMW16, yada yada yada, CL16, 
Um, don't know. Normally it's because Corsair don't make their own RAM chips as far as I know, so they import them or whatever. So you might not necessarily get the same RAM across all of the same part numbers, which is why it's really super sketchy to actually buy Corsair RAM and then try to upgrade it later using the part number because the chance of getting the same RAM twice is really hard unless you get the same batch or version number, which is even harder. Switch to update, update as soon as possible while Bill. While Bill. I've turned it off. Let's check for updates. Did you celebrate the 5th tonight or tomorrow? Uh, we celebrate the 5th never because we're horrible bastards. We don't really celebrate nah, the 5th. We never, we used to do fireworks when the kids were younger for them. Um, yeah. Thing is, with November fifth being well, on a Sunday this year, the kids Mike would let us sit on an electric box outside. Yeah, I think the last the last time this happened on a Sunday, uh, Calf's family were around, and I took a load of fireworks from the casualty that were supposed to be for props um, dispose of to, to dispose of safely. Not allowed fireworks on the premises, obviously, because fire hazard. Sure. So I put them in my premises. And I give a load away to other people as well. Um, yeah. And I did a load of fireworks in the back garden. That's that. That's got to be, what, 10 years ago? That was loads of years ago, wasn't it? I think that's the last time we had fireworks here in the house. Yeah, it must be 10 years ago. Probably longer than that. Don't really celebrate it, even though we have got possibly one of the world's greatest firework displays literally on our doorstep at Down End Park, which has got the, what, it's the King... Charles, no. No. King something the fifth. Oh, what is it, George? King George the fifth playing fields, and they have the legendary dining and round table fireworks display that has actually been opened previously by the pop star known as Peter Andre. And yeah, a very good one. It would be. Uh, I would like to go to it really, but it's just. It's just a mud bath. It's just shite. And it's just mud everywhere, and you got to wear wellies, and then you look like a wanker. <laughs> Ugh. I've never worn wellies there. Yeah. But you do come back with your feet like twice as, the thing as is, big as they went. If you go, you want to wear your nice, <laughs> your nice stuff, your nice trainers, or your boots or whatever. But you, with you, the fur. you kind of got to wear wellies, and it's just. There's something about a, a grown adult wearing wellies out. out that doesn't compute. Like, I don't get it. And you always, when you were a kid, you always had to wear like a bobble hat and your duffel coat and what are, that you wouldn't yeah. wear any other night. Freedom House 1984 says, what are wellies? Uh, Wellington boots. So these are rubberized shoes which go up to just below your knee. Um, if you imagine... I don't know what to imagine actually. It's a very, I think it might be a, a more of a British thing. Probably Wellington we've boots. Got this Mark Berry, does he still sing Mysterious Girl? Might do. What was his latest one? What was that? Insania. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not his latest, but the last one I heard of him. Careful walking outside with your wellies out. No, it's your well, it's not your, your like, your man tackle. It's, Rubber boots. <laughs> I don't own any wellies. Welly Bob says, I don't own wellies. Most adults in the UK don't. I mean, unless you gardening. own like a horse or something. Or you do gardening. Maybe. Or you do hiking. You don't go hiking in wellies. Some people do. They don't. They have hiking boots. You're funny. <laughs> That'd be the most uncomfortable thing to go hiking in. <laughs> Brigman says, cold and wet on the 5th, not for me. I am old. Nobody likes it. They should do, like, November the 5th in the summer, where it's, like, nice and they have a barbecue and yeah, do fireworks. Hey, it's now available to download and install. Right, let's, uh... Is that a good idea, drawing stream? Probably not. It says it's downloading. 
See, it says there, security, no, Windows, and also a security update for current channel broad. But I've never seen that on there. Welly Bob don't own Wellies, get your sticker. It's downloading. <laughs> yeah, Welly Bob don't own Wellies. What's going on with that? I always thought that the Welly Bob name was something to do with some sort of fetish thing with Wellies. Dave Aiken ran from across the field. Dave's got, um, Dave's the sort of person I'd imagine wearing wellies. In the UK, really, you need to have like a, a Land Rover and a horse to wear wellies to really do it justice. Mike did have a trench coat once. Equalizer said, I had that today. First time I hear that with security updates. Thank you. I thought I was going nuts. How can that have finished already? Restart required. You had a trench coat, didn't you, remember? I think so. And you shut it in the car door, yeah. and by the time you got to my house, it was just black with mud dragging along the floor as we drove. David Andrews says, I don't wear shoes at all. Flip-flops, rubber sandals is all I own. After all, my registered business is barefoot tech. There you go. The thing is, David, you live in a country where it's predominantly quite warm. If in the UK we didn't wear shoes and stuff, it would be bad times. Maybe you can go shoeless for six months. David Aiken says, ankle height wellies are the campest invention to grace this earth. I don't think I've seen ankle height. Height well is. Have. What's that? Kids wear them, don't they? No, it's like Crocs, but without the holes. Oh. Ugh. You've had I've... them for years. My mum had a pair years ago. I feel like I've. Been, I feel like I've been, like, oh, violated with that vision. Stuart Clary says my my long time current favourite saying. A wise man speaks because he has something to say. A fool speaks because he has to say something. Is that us in the That's me. <laughs> yeah, it's like cut the cord, Mike. Fluffy Crocs. David Underhill says nice, 16.13. Hang on, we need, to, we need to worry about this. Kieran says it's amusing that high heels were originally for men. What, stilettos? Or boots with heels? There's a big difference. Boots with fur and bell bottom jeans. <laughs> Does Mike need to reboot? I do need to do something. Reboot with those stiletto heels. Oh dear. Well, the PC hasn't frozen, crashed, hung, or done anything desperately bad. And from what I can tell, the, the stream hasn't dropped any frames and the audio has maintained good. Okay. I can. Thank you. Boots, he thinks. Boots. So it's like, what are they called? Pumps in America. Make you taller. Oh, yeah, it might be. Um, Aletto. Aletto? Aletta. My father used to say you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak. That is a very, <clears throat> very accurate thing. Ari Wolfman says the bra clasp was also made for men's suspenders. This stream is heading in a very bad direction. So I think on that bombshell... <laughs> that braces. Oh, braces like those. I think. That's what they call them. I'm, I'm hoping so. Suspenders. <laughs> oh my god. We've gone all Rocky Horror all of a sudden. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't Richard O'Brien. I might have the hair for it. When, did, oh, when you went to the funeral, you, <laughs> you looked like him, didn't you? <laughs> that was him, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Stuart Cleary's thrown another oh, 10 euros into the pot. Bless you, sir. That, he says, thanks, Mike and Kath. Yours cool. I don't know about cool. Just, uh. Sorry, I got the cat. Got no hands on There we go. Disco, disco, disco. 
Mub suspenders, grab your stock this year. Limited <laughs> Christmas run. They would be limited. You know, you want me to run in them. Yeah, I with my boots. With your boots with the fur. David Under says, my younger sister had a Rocky Horror themed wedding years ago. She met the hubby at a Rocky Horror movie night. Amazing. That is actually very cool. Well, is in suspenders. What a night that would be. That is basically um, Marshfield. Look it up. It's on the outskirts of uh, Bristol. What's that? It's very, very weird in Marshfield. And what's that place where they do the dog in? Oh. Oh, God. I can't think what it's called now. Tog Hill. Tog Hill. Look up Tog Hill. That's if you're passing through the Bristol area and you're bored and lonely, maybe bypass Tog Hill. There you can flash your lights to your heart's content and potentially uh, leave with a smile. Let's say. <laughs> Uh, Truckman says a very strange question. Now, coming from you, that won't be a thing, but have you had any sort of toy invade one of your PCs? No, I don't think so. I think I've possibly put a toy inside of a PC, but that was intentional. It hasn't invaded it. <coughs> Welly Bob says, I think I'll avoid Bristol. It sounds weird. Well, technically, Tog Hill is South Gloucestershire. It's not but it kind of is Bristol, I suppose. Is but it or is it Baines? It might be Baines, Bath and North East Somerset, potentially. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave says, rumour has it, Kath and Mike are featured on Google Maps at Tog Hill. We, we, Fortunately, we, been there for years. we have not been there for a long time. We went there years ago when Tog Hill was a place for other things, like car people and basically stoners to hang out. And then suddenly it turned into like a dogging place, but, uh, which was weird because I never realised. I never like going up there. Yeah. Couldn't get up the hill. <laughs> Obsolete Fox says, "Google Tog Hill. The first thing that pops up: Tog Hill dogging spot near Bristol." <laughs> oh dear. And then look at Ugly Bob, where you find your trench coat. <laughs> this is what, yeah, <laughs> the trench coat came from Tog Hill. Those were the days. Made friends for life there. <laughs> oh dear. Talk Hill, fun times. Right, I think we should wrap things up there before I get myself into a lot of trouble. And also I do have to go to work tomorrow, which sucks. So, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. You've got your winter coat on. Yeah, I've got my winter coat on and I've uh, finished off the bottle. It's only taken me, what, two years? <laughs> um, thanks, William, again. Yeah, thanks, William. And thank you all for your super chats, your kindness. And also thank you, Andy Archer, for supplying Welly Bob with a processor, which he then in turn donated money to us. That is awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, we will continue the AM5, AM4, Asus saga and see what happens. Look out for me if you can in the YouTube press and the media in general. Look for AM5 problems and see if other people are having the same problems that I am seeming to have, regardless of platform. I'm confident that it's down to cpu mounting pressure but as always we are yet to find out we need some scientific evidence to prove that theory right or wrong at least then hopefully we can get something done about it like some spacer shims or something anyway thanks for watching hope you've had an enjoyable saturday evening i've had a blast calf's probably enjoyed some of it i guess well, I don't know, maybe she likes the kittens so it's all good anyway i've been mike i in the real accent says he's uh, check out the comments on the YouTube video sent in the Discord. Awesome, will do. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Bib. Thanks for watching. Calf says bib. 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 Now if this end stream button works, I'll be amazed. But we'll try it. Ciao for now. Oh, ciao for now. God.